Welcome to the fantasy audiobook, Hokage. Many children, many blessings, starting with Mist Shinobi Kunoichi. Chapter 61 As one of the Sanin of Konoha and an absolute high-ranking official of Konoha Village, Orochimaru naturally knew the identity of Kobayakawa Kazuma, and he had heard about all the things that happened to Kobayakawa since he took office. Kobayakawa Kazuma in front of him became Mist Shinobi Janin just one year after taking the Chunin exam, and then represented Kurigakur in Konoha. Kobayakawa Kazuma is naturally a genius in the eyes of ordinary people, but for Orochimaru, it is nothing more than that. Ordinary ninjas are still too weak, and without bloodline limits, they will never reach the height of bloodline limit ninjas in their lifetime. Hearing his name from Orochimaru, Kobayakawa Kazuma was slightly startled, and then relieved. His position as the person in charge of Kurigakur, and this position should naturally be heard by the middle and high-level officials of Konoha. After all, the land of water where Kurigakur is located is also one of the five major countries, and it has a significant influence in the ninja world. I want your research on the Byakugan of the Hyuga clan. Of course, I will exchange the corresponding information with you, and I won't let you bleed in vain. Kobayakawa Kazuma said truthfully. When he heard about the research, Orochimaru's plain smile suddenly withdrew, replaced by a solemn face. Where did you hear this news? Orochimaru's expression became cold, as if he was going to kill someone if he disagreed with him. Orochimaru at this time enjoyed a great reputation in Konoha, and the shameful experiments he did were not exposed under the fluorescent light. As the most valued disciple of the third Hokage, Orochimaru now still cares about his external image. Don't worry about this, I am the only one who knows about this for the time being. Kobayakawa Kazuma subconsciously put his hand on the ninja sword. The oppression of the Sanin was too strong. Even though he had become a Janin, he still couldn't help wanting to suddenly attack when facing Orochimaru's malice. However, Kobayakawa Kazuma quickly stabilized his mentality. Although Orochimaru is a Sanin, the first echelon below cage level, he is not very afraid of the opponent's attack now. Now he not only has a large amount of chakra, but also has the terrible ninjutsu of crystal style. All these advantages combined are enough for him to escape from Orochimaru. Ha! Huh. Seeing Kobayakawa Kazuma's nervous reaction, Orochimaru sneered. So, what information do you plan to exchange with me? Orochimaru restrained his hostility and asked. There is a mountain cemetery in the uninhabited land just outside the border of the Land of Fire. There are the cells of First Hokage Hashirama you were looking for, and the secrets of Sage of Six Paths. Kobayakawa Kazuma sold Uchiha Obito's base without hesitation. It is worth it to sell Obito's information in exchange for something useful to me. Of course, Orochimaru at this time was no match for Uchiha Obito. Orochimaru now was not at the cage level, and even the living corpse reincarnation had not been developed. You are so brave to tell me the secret of the Sage of Six Paths. Orochimaru chuckled and said, Tomorrow I will return to the same place and give you what you want. Although it was unknown whether what Kobayakawa Kazuma said was true or not, there was no doubt that this diplomatic ambassador of Mist Shinobi knew too many secrets, not only about his secret human body research but also many other shocking secrets. It is better not to offend such a person easily. Kazuma Kobayakawa nodded and reached a deal, and he could return Hyuga-chan to the Hyuga clan. When Hyuga Haruka comes again, just let her take Hyuga-chan away. As for the follow-up matters, I believe Hyuga Haruka will handle it well. The next evening, Kazuma Kobayakawa found Orochimaru and took away the results of Orochimaru's research on Bayakugan. Then he returned to the embassy and waited for Hyuga Haruka to appear. In the early morning, Hyuga Haruka appeared outside Kobayakawa Kazuma's room on time. She took off Roshan outside the door and walked into the room. She can make sacrifices for Hyuga-chan, just like Hyuga-chan is willing to sacrifice for the Hyuga clan. Sister-in-law, what on earth are you doing? Aren't you afraid that your elder brother will know if you do such a thing? Suddenly, the lights in the room turned on, and Hyuga-chan was standing next to Kazuma Kobayakawa, looking at Hyuga Haruka with a gloomy face. Chan-chan, Hyuga Haruka couldn't help but blush. Even for Hyuga-chan, what she did was unspeakable. Sorry, Chan-chan, this is all my own choice. Hyuga Haruka didn't mention any righteousness, but just took all the blame on himself. I told you, 
at least you look like a famous lady. Put on your clothes quickly and don't embarrass our Hyuga clan. Hyuga Chan's eyes were on Kobayakawa Kazuma, but he was scolding the clan wife of the Hyuga clan. Seeing the awkward meeting between the two, Kobayakawa Kazuma couldn't help but laugh. He said to Hyuga Haruka, Now, you can take Hyuga Chan away. After saying that, Kobayakawa Kazuma left the room and went out to admire the moon. After this complicated operation, it was finally possible to send Hyuga Chan back to raise the fetus, and he no longer had to worry about Konoha being harmful to the unborn child. After making so many sacrifices, Kazuma Kobayakawa felt a little tired. Next, all he had to do was wait for the child in Hyuga Chan's belly to be born and receive system rewards. Chan Chan, welcome back safely. Hyuga hugged Hyuga Chan, completely ignoring the disheveled clothes, and her tears wet Hyuga Chan's shoulders. Hyuga Haruka is sincerely happy that Hyuga Chan can successfully return to the clan. She knows how hard it is for all this to happen. Fortunately, the current Miss Shinobi ambassador is Kazuma Kobayakawa, a lecherous and irresponsible diplomat, otherwise, Hyuga Chan will only die in the blood mist. I'm back. Hyuga Chan hugged Hyuga Haruka and responded. She stared blankly outside the door at the plants and trees of the embassy, but what appeared in front of her eyes were scenes of Kazuma Kobayakawa and her moving around in various places. With Hyuga-san returning to the Hyuga clan, Kobayakawa Kazuma also submitted the secrets of research on the Bayakugan to Kurigakur. Half a month later, Kobayakawa Kazuma received a compliment from his boss, Watermelon Dolphin Ghost. In the letter, Watermelon Dolphin Ghost was very satisfied. Even if he brought back someone from the Hyuga branch house, Kurigakur would probably not be able to research any information about the Bayakugan. After all, the people in the Hyuga branch house have been imprinted with the caged bird mark, and they are particularly devoted to Konoha. During the Third World War, Kurigakur also captured several people from the Hyuga branch house on the battlefield, but there is no doubt that those Hyuga tribesmen committed suicide. Their white eyes were destroyed by caged bird, leaving nothing useful for Mist Shinobi. Research value. Kobayakawa Kazuma put aside the letter from Watermelon Yamaguchi. At dawn, he left the embassy and went to Hyuga Chan to ask for the shadow clone technique. The sky was dark, and only the faint light at the end of the sky could be seen. Kobayakawa Kazuma headed towards the Hyuga clan's territory. On a small road leading to the Hyuga clan, Hyuga Chan, wearing a long skirt with a firework pattern, stood against the wall. When she saw Kazuma Kobayakawa, a smile appeared in her eyes. Hey, I promised you the shadow clone technique. Hyuga Chan waved the scroll in his hand and showed off to Kazuma Kobayakawa. You really helped me a lot. Kazuma Kobayakawa held Hyuga Chan in his arms. With the god level ninjutsu of shadow clone, his next journey as a ninja will be smoother. Even crystal style, which has never been carefully developed, has enough time and energy to study. Hyuga Chan was confused by Kobayakawa Kazuma's sudden movement. She gently put her hands on Kobayakawa Kazuma's back, closed her eyes, and her face looked like the red clouds on the horizon. After separating from Kazuma Kobayakawa, Hyuga Chan quickly rushed home. Stealing the shadow clone technique was a decision she made privately and must not be discovered by her brother. In the home of the Hyuga clan, outside her home, Hyuga Chan met the person she least expected to meet. Chan Chan, after completing the mission outside the village, I heard the news about your return. It's great. Although some people in the clan are spreading rumors that you were insulted by that scumbag, I believe you. Masato Hyuga held his hand Hyuga Chan's hands looked very happy. Since Hyuga Chan was taken away, Masato Hyuga has gone to the third Hokage many times, asking for negotiation to get Hyuga Chan back. Alas, Hyuga Chan sighed. She didn't want to see her fiancé. In the past, she didn't know what it felt like to like someone, so even if she married someone she didn't like, she could barely get in touch with him. But now, Hyuga Chan put his hand on his heart, feeling very calm, without even any feeling of restlessness. She knew very well that she didn't like this fiancé, and she didn't even have any impulse. Chan Chan, I'm going to propose marriage to Master Hiyashi today. Let's get married. Masato Hyuga didn't notice Hyuga Chan's changes at all, and he still just talked about his joy to himself. I'm sorry, Masato. Hyuga Chan pulled away her hand, narrowed her eyes slightly, and said with a smile, 
We can never go back. Why? Hayuga Masato's expression suddenly changed, his eyes showed deep fear, and he was waiting for Hayuga Chan's answer with a pleading expression. Because I'm pregnant, Hayuga Chan gently rubbed her belly, with a gentle smile on her face, and the brilliance of motherly love seemed to be overflowing. I promised Lord Kobayakawa that our child will be born smoothly. Going to the Hayuga clan is my agreement with him. Ha! Hayuga Masato took a breath subconsciously, and there seemed to be a bit of vibrato in his tone. Why, why do you have a child for that scumbag, Chan Chan? Masato Hayuga shook Hayuga Chan's shoulders, his voice filled with tears. Hayuga Chan shook off Hayuga Masato's hand impatiently and said coldly, Masato, I'm telling you, it's really annoying to pester a woman like this. Hayuga Chan turned around and left. Hayuga Masato seemed to have been drained of all his strength in an instant. He leaned against the wall weakly, his body gradually curled up into a ball, and he let out a whimpering sound. Kazuma Kobayakawa, who took away the shadow clone technique, also returned to the embassy. He stayed alone in his room and secretly learned the shadow clone technique. Shadow clone technique is a ninjutsu that is far more difficult than any ninjutsu that Kazuma Kobayakawa has learned before. Thanks to his B-level ninja qualification, Kazuma Kobayakawa can quickly learn this ninjutsu. In the following days, Kazuma Kobayakawa, in addition to dealing with daily affairs, spent his free time studying the shadow clone technique. The only disadvantage of being a diplomat is that you don't have time to devote yourself to improving your skills. Three months later, winter was almost over, and the snow in Konoha began to melt. Kobayakawa Kazuma's shadow clone technique completion rate reached 3%. At this stage, Kobayakawa Kazuma has been able to use the shadow clone technique unstably, although there is a certain probability of failure. However, more chakra made Kobayakawa Kazuma not care about the risk of failure. Since there is a certain failure rate, just try a few more times. Every morning, Kazuma Kobayakawa would use the shadow clone technique to create two shadow clone, and then let one of the shadow clone leave the embassy before dawn and go to a deserted place to develop crystal style, and the other shadow clone stay in the embassy to practice his daily ninjutsu. He himself is wandering around every corner of Konoha village, dealing with various things. The fundamental reason why there were only two shadow clone was that Kobayakawa Kazuma was afraid of the consequences of excessive fatigue or chakra exhaustion. After all, after the shadow clone technique is released, in addition to the knowledge and experience gained by the clone will be returned to the main body, the feeling of fatigue will also be returned to the main body. It is for this reason that multiple shadow clone techniques that can separate multiple shadow clones at once are listed as forbidden techniques. However, even so, Kazuma Kobayakawa is very satisfied. The existence of two shadow clones means that his speed of practicing ninjutsu has reached twice the usual speed. Another month has passed, and Kobayakawa Kazuma's shadow clone technique has reached 5% completion. At this completion level, there is almost no risk of failure when performing the shadow clone technique, but it will only waste an additional part of chakra. Everywhere you look, the sakura trees scattered in Konoha reveal their budding flowers, and the small trees by the roadside also sprout their tender green branches. Kobayakawa Kazuma went to the Uchiha clan's clan as usual. Although Uchiha Fugaku didn't have a good impression of him, he didn't intend to let go of Uchiha's fat. In particular, while Hayuga Chan is still raising her baby, it is necessary to seize the time to get a beauty from the Uchiha clan to enhance her strength and deal with the crisis that may occur next. Moreover, Kazuma Kobayakawa could vaguely feel that Konoha village had become increasingly unstable recently, and the conflict between the Uchiha clan and the village was intensifying. When the night of genocide comes, I am afraid that there will no longer be any Uchiha women who can give birth to children. A few hundred meters away from the Uchiha tribe, Kobayakawa Kazuma and Uchiha Itachi accidentally met on a path, which made Kobayakawa Kazuma wary. At the moment they met, Uchiha Itachi's three tomo Sharingan opened subconsciously. Kazuma Kobayakawa knew very well that the Sharingan of the Uchiha clan, in addition to actively using it in battle, would also open up when the emotion was too high. Uchiha Itachi now probably not only has a bad impression of him, but also has murderous intentions. Lord Kobayakawa, Uchiha Itachi bowed to Kazuma Kobayakawa. He did not have a good impression of this Karigakur man who often appeared at home. During this sensitive period, 
Kobayakawa Kazuma's visit will only intensify the conflict between the Uchiha clan and the village. Having witnessed the Third Ninja War, he longs for peace. Seeing Uchiha Itachi's black hair and the tears in his eye sockets, Kobayakawa Kazuma couldn't help but chuckled and asked, what's the matter? Please don't go to the place where the Uchiha clan lives anymore. The relationship between the village and the Uchiha clan is very tense now. You are a ninja of Kurigakur. Your actions have brought huge trouble to our clan. Uchiha Itachi lowered his head and spoke in a tone of voice, an attitude are very respectful. I'm talking about you, you clearly have the Sharingan that the Uchiha clan is proud of, but you can't see the falseness and the reality at all. Itachi, you are as stupid as Uchiha Shisui. Kobayakawa Kazuma shook his head, not intending to pay attention to this a young genius. Perhaps Itachi has his own understanding of peace, but in Kazuma Kobayakawa's view, it is undoubtedly very stupid to abandon a clan just for a false peace. Although Itachi finally saved his younger brother Uchiha Sasuke, it was at the expense of the entire Uchiha. Although Kido Manjetsu, who was called a genius like Itachi, was smaller, giving up the false peace and choosing to be a rebel was another option. The breeze blew by, but the willow branches that should have been floating in the wind seemed to be fixed by something and solidified on one side. Kazuma Kobayakawa immediately realized the problem. He was under a genjutsu. At some point, Uchiha Itachi cast a genjutsu on him. Hey, Kobayakawa Kazuma was in a bad mood. He is indeed Konoha's Kakebi. Do you dare to say that Uchiha Itachi is just a chunin? With just three Magatama, Uchiha Itachi is enough to instantly kill most Janin from other ninja villages. Kazuma Kobayakawa quickly disrupted the chakra in his body and used this method to escape from the genjutsu. The still picture in front of him was peeled off, Uchiha Itachi held the kanai in his backhand and stabbed it. A large amount of chakra erupted under his feet. Kobayakawa Kazuma used the teleportation technique to avoid Uchiha Itachi's thrust, and his heart was extremely solemn. Without Mangekyo Sharingan, Uchiha Itachi's strength has reached this level, and his genjutsu attainments may not be inferior to those of the 30-year-old Yuhi Kuranai. Do you know what it means to do something to me? Kazuma Kobayakawa asked coldly. Taking advantage of this gap, he relieved the two shadow clone who were practicing ninjutsu in the embassy. In an instant, a large amount of chakra was returned to the main body, which gave Kazuma Kobayakawa a little confidence. That's why I'm here to talk to you alone. Uchiha Itachi threatened. Since you don't agree, I can only defend peace in my own way. Afterwards, I will bear all the blame. It seems that you are very confident that you can beat me. Kobayakawa Kazuma twisted his neck. He deliberately avoided Uchiha Itachi's sight to prevent him from falling into another illusion. Uchiha Itachi did not shy away from it, and said coldly to Kaido, I have investigated you. Although you are far better than me in ninjutsu proficiency and slightly stronger than me in physical skills, your ninjutsu is very average. My Sharingan restrained. That's true. Kobayakawa Kazuma couldn't help but admit that although Itachi was only in his teens at this period, his mind and strength had surpassed that of ordinary janin. Coupled with the Sharingan of the Uchiha clan, there were really not many janin in the major ninja villages, his opponent. However, you were investigating me two months ago. Now, your information is out of date. Kobayakawa Kazuma honestly formed the seals with his hands, Cho, Shu, Chen, Z, Shu, Hai, Si, Yin, in total. The eight seals ended, and in the next moment, six shadow clone appeared in front of Uchiha Itachi. This shadow clone technique is a newly learned ninjutsu by Kazuma Kobayakawa. Except for Terumi Mei and a few other people, no one has seen it. Naturally, Uchiha Itachi has never seen it. Shadow Clone Technique is a ninjutsu invented by 2nd Hokage Senju Toborama for the Uchiha clan, and it is the Sharingan that can be restrained. I know your genjutsu is very strong, and your clan's unique Sharingan also has a bonus for casting genjutsu. But, can you make all Shadow Clone fall under genjutsu in an instant? Avoiding Uchiha Itachi's eyes, six Shadow Clones rushed towards Uchiha Itachi. Kobayakawa Kazuma's biggest advantage is naturally his huge amount of chakra and excellent physical skills. Even if the chakra is divided into seven parts, each part of the chakra is still enough to compete with the young Itachi. 
A shadow clone used the teleportation technique to come behind Uchiha Itachi, and then started a close combat with Itachi. They are all entities. This is not an ordinary clone technique. They are all genuine shadow clone. The moment he saw the shadow clone appear, Uchiha Itachi couldn't help but panic. At this moment, Sharingan's advantage was gone. Uchiha Itachi's Sharingan rotates quickly. He can see through shadow clones every move and predict the opponent's next move. Chance. Seeing shadow clones raised right hand come down, Uchiha Itachi crouched down to avoid the attack. He caught the opportunity for the shadow clone's attack, and the kanai in his hand flew out, killing a shadow clone with one shot of kanai. The remaining five shadow clone used the teleportation technique to come to Uchiha Itachi, and the five of them swarmed up. Uchiha Itachi jumped high and dodged the shadow clone's attack. He quickly formed seals in midair, his mouth bulged, and he aimed at Kazuma Kobayakawa at the rear, which was his true form. Fire Style Great Fireball Technique The Great Fireball attacked Kazuma Kobayakawa, burning the ground beneath his feet like a sea of fire. Seeing the figure submerged in the sea of fire, Uchiha Itachi breathed a sigh of relief. He had won. The main body was attacked, and even the shadow clone below him was affected. They were slowly lifted one by one and exploded into a ball of white mist. As the last flame from his mouth extinguished, Uchiha Itachi fell to the ground, and suddenly, a long knife pierced his body. How is it? Does my shadow clone look similar? Kobayakawa Kazuma's voice sounded behind Uchiha Itachi, with a slight tremor in his voice. The one that was swallowed up by the great fireball was naturally the shadow clone. Kobayakawa Kazuma deliberately let the shadow clone be burned by the great fireball before it was released. However, as the shadow clone was released, the pain of being burned by the flames was also received by the main body, which was very painful. However, after all, the opponent is Uchiha Itachi, who is known as a genius. How can he find this perfect backstab opportunity if he doesn't pay a price? How could it be? Itachi looked down at the long knife that pierced his chest, feeling a heartbreaking pain. Immediately, his body dispersed, and a group of crows fled in all directions, regrouping into Itachi in the distance. Only this time, Itachi covered his chest, and blood spurted out from the wound. Is it a crow clone? Kobayakawa Kazuma felt unlucky. Itachi's ability was too buggy. Until now, he still can't understand the principle of the crow clone. However, what is certain is that he did stab the main body just now, otherwise Itachi would not have been injured. Kazuma Kobayakawa stepped back, and the remaining two shadow clone took out Kanai from their ninja tool bag and stabbed Uchiha Itachi. Kobayakawa Kazuma's idea was also very simple. Since he couldn't kill Itachi once, he might as well kill it several times. As long as he was not in Itachi's illusion world, he would always succeed. Sharingan couldn't see through the shadow clone technique. Even if Itachi was a genius, it would be difficult to find the true form in the shadow clone. Itachi, what are you doing? Suddenly, Uchiha Makoto's voice arrived on the battlefield. Kazuma Kobayakawa immediately put on a smiling expression, and the two shadow clone who were about to kill Itachi put away their kunai and helped Itachi pat the dust off his body. Itachi asked me to teach him a genin technique, but he accidentally stabbed himself. Kobayakawa Kazuma did not choose to continue to take action. He could not guarantee that he could kill Itachi, who had endless ninjutsu, and he could not guarantee that Uchiha Makoto would not take action. Although Uchiha Makoto is usually just a beautiful housewife, and has never been revealed to be a Sharingan, there is no doubt that this gentle and beautiful housewife is a genuine Janin. Maybe Uchiha Makoto is stronger than the current Itachi. However, if you want to confirm this kind of thing, you only need to open the system and take a look, and you can guess pretty well. Name, Uchiha Makoto. Age, 33. Beauty, A. Ninja qualification, B+. Blood inheritance limit, Sharingan. Confirmed, this woman Uchiha Makoto is indeed the hidden boss. Not only is she a Sharingan of the Uchiha clan, she also has a B-plus ninja qualification. If a B-level ninja qualification can reach the level of Konoha Elite Janin, then there is no doubt that this woman Uchiha Makoto may have touched the threshold of cage level. The current Uchiha Makoto is stronger than Itachi during the three Megatama period. Once he confronts him, he has no chance of winning. Sure enough, 
The Uchiha clan is a race prone to giving birth to monsters, and a normally inconspicuous woman has become so powerful. Let me tell you, Itachi, even if you are joking with Kobayakawa-sama, there must be a limit. Uchiha Makoto said Uchiha Itachi, and then reprimanded with a straight face, hurry up and apologize to Kobayakawa-sama. I'm sorry, Kobayakawa-sama. Uchiha Itachi bent down and looked extremely sincere in front of Makoto. Kobayakawa Kazuma didn't want to break up with Uchiha Makoto, so he went down the steps. My wife, the clan leader, is serious. Kazuma Kobayakawa showed a magnanimous look and said with a smile, You, the Sharingan of the Uchiha clan, can indeed see most of the ninjutsu clearly, but when can you see clearly the illusion and reality? And why should we sacrifice the possible reality for that falsehood? Uchiha Itachi was slightly startled. He knew very well that Kobayakawa Kazuma was insinuating him, and he could not distinguish between false peace and real peace. However, since it is peace, what is the difference between true and false? The cruel battlefield is more terrifying than false peace. This child is still young. Uchiha Makoto patted Itachi's head and spoke lovingly for Uchiha Itachi. Kazuma Kobayakawa shook his head. He ignored the mother and son and entered the Uchiha clan's territory as if nothing happened. Outside Uchiha Fugaku's house, a little girl was leaning against the wall, bored and pressing her heels against the wall. Although he is about the same age as Itachi, it is not difficult to see that he will definitely be a beauty in the future. I can only say that Uchiha is worthy of being a handsome boy and a beautiful girl. Can you tell me your name? Kobayakawa Kazuma asked with a kind smile, standing in front of the little girl. Izumi, I am Uchiha Izumi. The little girl replied with her clear voice. She looked at Kobayakawa Kazuma with dodgy eyes, as if she was a little afraid of strangers. Affected by Itachi, Izumi does not like Kazuma Kobayakawa. Izumi, what a lovely name. Kazuma Kobayakawa turned around and saw Makoto and Uchiha Itachi had arrived. If one day, Izumi is in danger, you can come to me, Kurigakur can protect you. Kobayakawa Kazuma said to Uchiha Izumi. Uchiha Izumi is Itachi's best friend, but in the end, neither friends nor relatives can stop Itachi's determination to defend the false peace. Uchiha Itachi is righteous, but also paranoid. Izumi, go back. Uchiha Itachi was slightly startled, he turned his head and said to Uchiha Izumi. Afterwards, Uchiha Itachi did not go home, but left the Uchiha tribe directly, probably to go to the hospital for treatment. Uchiha Izumi left, Kobayakawa Kazuma didn't say anything else, he went directly to see Fugaku. As usual, Kurigakur's thirst for talents was explained to Uchiha Fugaku. However, this time Kobayakawa added that he is not personally interested in the survival of the Uchiha clan, but he still hopes to retain some of the blood of the Uchiha clan. Mr. Fugaku, if one day you can no longer support yourself, you can send your wife and children to me in advance. I will take care of your wife, so you have nothing to worry about. Uchiha Fugaku was drinking quietly, and he probably realized that the conflict between the Uchiha clan and the village was irreconcilable. If this continues, the war between Uchiha and the village will break out sooner or later. Perhaps sending his wife and children to Kurigakur is also a way, at least to preserve Uchiha's bloodline one. Ah, until then, I'll leave it to you, Mr. Kobayakawa. Uchiha Fugaku put down his wine glass and lowered his head in a sincere tone. Kazuma Kobayakawa nodded, and then left the Uchiha clan. As an outsider, he quietly waited for the development of the Uchiha clan. At the same time, as the holder of the system, Kazuma Kobayakawa is also actively looking for women from the Uchiha clan who have excellent blood inheritance limits. Unfortunately, for such a large Uchiha clan, core clan members with Uchiha blood are not common. Most of them just have the name of the Uchiha clan. Uchiha women with extraordinary looks and qualifications like Uchiha Makoto will never be seen again. Since his ninja qualification reached B, Kobayakawa Kazuma's ninjutsu completion has ushered in a new wave of growth. The completion of clones, avatars, and transformation technique has reached about 50%, and even the sea level sword technique. Sukage and water style. Shui Luanbo technique, their completion levels have reached more than 40%. At this stage, Kobayakawa Kazuma's Sukikage sword technique has undergone new changes. After abandoning the starting position, 
there is an additional sword technique, Tsukikage's Shadow Sword. Now Kobayakawa Kazuma can summon two sword shadows with one slash. Ordinary ninjas are almost unable to avoid the Tsukikage sword technique. In the blink of an eye, the Sakura flowers in Konoha village bloomed and fell, and it was early summer. The summer morning was already hot. After breakfast, Kobayakawa Kazuma asked Shadow Clone to stay in the embassy to handle matters, while he himself came to the back mountain of Konoha. For the past two months, his Shadow Clone has come to inaccessible places to practice crystal style every day, which has also given him a deeper understanding of the limits of the blood inheritance. Putting his hands together, Kazuma Kobayakawa released the crystal style ninjutsu. Crystal style. Red Lotus Technique. A huge crystal lotus flower quickly grew out of the ground and transformed into a lotus shape, covering an area the size of a living room. Crystal style. Hexagonal sealing techniques. A huge crystal appeared in front of Kazuma Kobayakawa. The crystal was in the form of a cube. It first completed the six faces of the cube, and then began to grow toward the interior. The crystal wrapped around a forest bird, and eventually turned into a complete cube. In the past, when he was in Kurigakur, blood successor ninjas had to be hidden, so Kazuma Kobayakawa did not have the opportunity to develop crystal style, a blood successor limit. Now that I have been in Konoha for more than half a year, after learning Shadow Clone, I finally have the energy to develop this powerful blood inheritance limit. The existence of crystal style. Gurin technique and crystal style. Hexagonal sealing techniques gave Kazuma Kobayakawa another trump card against the powerful Jonin. Boom. As the practice ended, Kobayakawa Kazuma punched the grown crystal. Suddenly, a crack appeared on the crystal. This crack soon spread to every corner of the crystal. With a click sound, it became the debris was scattered all over the ground. The debris was extremely small and flew in all directions with the breeze. Who? Suddenly, Kazuma Kobayakawa looked behind him warily. A man slowly walked out of the bushes. His arm seemed to be crippled and blood was flowing. It's so perfect. You're so perfect, Kobayakawa Kazuma. Orochimaru stuck out his long tongue, and he licked his face, his eyes full of greed. When he first met Kazuma Kobayakawa, he thought that Kazuma Kobayakawa was just an ordinary janin. Although it was a bit incredible to transform from Genin to janin in just one year, it was nothing extraordinary. Unexpectedly, Kobayakawa Kazuma is actually a blood successor ninja. The crystal style just now is an extremely terrifying blood successor. As long as it hits an organism, it can destroy the organism from its molecular structure. There is no doubt that Kazuma Kobayakawa, who has the limit of blood inheritance, is not only a genius but also a genius with great potential. Although it was not as good as the Sharingan from the Uchiha clan, it was enough to attract his attention. Where did that injury come from? Kobayakawa Kazuma ignored Orochimaru's greedy gaze. Instead, he became very interested in the injury on Orochimaru's arm. Calculating the time, it is not surprising that Orochimaru defected to Konoha at this time. That old guy from third generation set a trap. Orochimaru didn't shy away from it, but said directly, Now, the village is chasing me, and my experiments were discovered by the old guy. In the distance, a rustling sound came. Orochimaru's expression changed again and again. He ran quickly and entered the depths of the dense forest. A few minutes later, Hitaki Kakashi took several chunin and followed the bloodline on the ground to Kobayakawa Kazuma. After glancing at the bloodline on the ground, Hitaki Kakashi glanced at Kazuma Kobayakawa again and continued to follow the bloodline. Kobayakawa Kazuma was not in the mood to get involved in Konoha's family affairs. He returned to the embassy and read through the ten scrolls left by Naoya. After comparing the information left by Juji Naoya with Konoha's map, Kobayakawa Kazuma marked five suspicious locations on the map. These five locations may be where Orochimaru's laboratory is located. Of course Kazuma Kobayakawa is not interested in Konoha's family affairs, but now, Orochimaru has run away, and Orochimaru's laboratory has become a deserted land. There must be a lot of good things hidden in these laboratories. Even if you can only get a little, it is not in vain. Somebody come, Kobayakawa Kazuma shouted, and a masked ninja appeared outside the door, kneeling on one knee on the ground and asked, Lord Kobayakawa, what are your orders? Inform all available ninjas to investigate the five locations on the map, and hand over all the investigation results to me before dark. 
Kazuma Kobayakawa handed the map to the ninja and said. Yes, the ninja took the scroll and disappeared. Kobayakawa Kazuma went to find Terumime as if nothing had happened. Tonight was the time to act. It would be great if he could make a fortune. As early as when he came to Konoha, Kobayakawa Kazuma had the idea of letting Terumi May learn ninjutsu. Unfortunately, Kurigakur from the embassy had too many informants. If Terumi May shows the limits of the blood inheritance in the process of learning ninjutsu, the news will inevitably spread back to Kurigakur, and he will no longer need to be an ambassador. However, since meeting Uchiha Izumi a few days ago, Kobayakawa Kazuma has new ideas. Kazuma Kobayakawa and Terumi May had dinner together, and until evening, the Chunin of Mist Shinobi brought back news one after another. In the end, Kobayakawa Kazuma delineated three key points where Orochimaru's laboratory might exist, and left the embassy at night. A shadow clone stayed in the embassy to lower Konoha's vigilance. He himself put on a mask, prepared for battle, and set off towards the final designated location. The two shadow clones went to the more dangerous of the three designated locations, and the real Kazuma Kobayakawa went to the safest one. Under the cover of night, Kazuma Kobayakawa arrived at the small river next to the Uchiha tribe, and then plunged into the dense forest. There was a wooden house in the forest. The hut looked like it had been abandoned for a long time, with tattered boards everywhere and a disgusting smell of feces in the air. Based on the information left by Juji Naoya, Kazuma Kobayakawa rummaged around the hut, and soon he found a hollow place under his feet. Drawing out his ninja sword, Kobayakawa Kazuma stabbed it into the hollow under his feet, and almost all of his ninja sword sank into the bottom. Kazuma Kobayakawa knew he was in the right place. He cleared the ground beneath his feet and lifted up a buried boulder. Under the boulder, a hole appeared that could only accommodate one person. After lighting the torch, Kazuma Kobayakawa entered the cave alone. A slight wind blew from the depths of the cavity, making the lighting torch somewhat unstable. Walking forward along the cavity, there was a huge underground space at the end. The light of the torch was not enough to illuminate the underground space, so Kazuma Kobayakawa carefully divided the torch into two parts and threw one of the torches down. The fire fell into the abyss, and soon fell to the ground, making a series of impact sounds. Through some of the falling firelight, Kobayakawa Kazuma was also able to get a glimpse of the situation below. This is Orochimaru's secret experimental site. Jumping down, Kazuma Kobayakawa landed on the ground. By the light of the torch, he was able to observe the entire laboratory. The huge petri dish made of glass contains various organs and remains of living things. Some organs are even alive and making regular rhythms. That Orochimaru guy really took action against the Uchiha clan. Kazuma Kobayakawa stood in front of a small petri dish and saw a pair of sharingan. Although it only had the shape of a single magatama, there was no doubt that it belonged to the Uchiha clan. Seeing the sharingan appearing here, Kazuma Kobayakawa was not moved at all. One tomo sharingan had no effect on him. He cared more about the literature and ninjutsu studied by Orochimaru. As we all know, one of Orochimaru's dreams is to learn all the ninjutsu in the world, so in Orochimaru's laboratory, in addition to the research results of experiments, there must be some ninjutsu and forbidden technique. Even if this is just one of Orochimaru's bases, there should be a lot of valuable things there. Hiss. In the darkness, a pair of green eyes stared at Kazuma Kobayakawa, and a huge python crawled out of the darkness. The snake's head stood five or six meters high. Kazuma Kobayakawa faced the erected snake head as if facing a giant two-story building. He held a torch in one hand and drew the ninja sword from behind with the other hand. As the fire attribute chakra is injected into the ninja sword, the ninja sword emits a red color. Ninja Technique Moon Shadow Kobayakawa Kazuma put the torch aside and slashed at the giant snake in front of him with his knife. The two shadow blades cut the giant snake from two different directions. Swinging the ninja sword hard, the giant snake's body was shattered as the ninja sword cut it, and the smelly snake blood sprayed everywhere. After a while, the snake's head was chopped off, and its headless body was still rolling and twisting. Kobayakawa Kazuma took back the torch and continued to explore the laboratory. Walking against the wall and groping, Kobayakawa Kazuma soon discovered a secret door. When he walked into the secret door, he could see a structure similar to a closet, with ink and various papers placed on the closet. 
Kazuma Kobayakawa opened a scroll and took a look, and then discovered the purpose of this laboratory. This laboratory was set up not far from the Uchiha clan. Its purpose was mainly to study the Sharingan of the Uchiha clan. The vessels in the hall include not only the Sharingan of the Uchiha tribe, but also a series of parts such as body organs. However, Kazuma Kobayakawa was not interested in any of these studies. He flipped through the scrolls quickly, throwing away many things after just one glance. After opening another scroll, Kobayakawa Kazuma felt ecstatic that he actually had these things, one of the forbidden technique developed by Second Hokage, the Flying Thunder God technique. Although it is not the Flying Thunder God modified by Fourth Hokage, Orochimaru's personal unique insights are marked on it. Kazuma Kobayakawa had to sigh, Orochimaru is really a genuine genius. He put the ninjutsu scroll with Flying Thunder God technique written on it into his ninja tool bag, and then continued to rummage. After a while, he found another A-level fire-style ninjutsu. I knew I would have brought a bag with me. Kobayakawa Kazuma sighed. After two scrolls were put down, the ninja tool bag was almost full. I have to say that Orochimaru's laboratory is indeed a treasure-like place. It is just one of many laboratories, and it has brought so many surprises to me. At this moment, slight footsteps came from outside the dark room, which was extremely obvious in this dark and silent underground. It seems that a mouse has sneaked in. Danzo puffed up his mouth, and a wind blade was spat out from his mouth. Wind style. Vacuum wave. A wind blade hit the wall of the secret room, tearing a hole. The power of the wind blade did not diminish, and it made a deep dent in the wall after breaking through the secret door. As a last resort, Kazuma Kobayakawa had no choice but to slip out of the secret door, and the torch on the wall of the underground laboratory was lit. Donzo's face became more solemn when facing Kazuma Kobayakawa. Why is Serutobi's Anbu here? Danzo was surprised for a moment when he saw the mask on Kazuma Kobayakawa's face, but soon he understood. Are you pretending to be Anbu to steal Konoha's secrets? Danzo reached into the ninja bag on his waist and took out a shuriken. Wind style. Vacuum wave. Danzo exhaled from his mouth and turned the shuriken, attaching the power of wind style to the periphery of the shuriken. Immediately, the shuriken flew towards Kazuma Kobayakawa in a spinning direction. It was so powerful that it dug a large cutting mark on the wall of the laboratory in an instant. The power remained unabated and it was still sinking deeper into the wall. Kazuma Kobayakawa used the teleportation technique to avoid Danzo's attack. Danzo may not have gained the power of Sharingan yet, but his strength is still higher than that of an average Jonin. In order to hide his identity, Kobayakawa Kazuma did not plan to use the Moon Shadow Sword technique and those commonly used ninjutsu. He put his hands together and called out the name of the ninjutsu. Crystal style. Red lotus technique. In an instant, Danzo's feet began to tremble, and a huge lotus grew under Danzo and immediately bloomed. Is there any limit to blood inheritance? Tricky guy. Danzo jumped into the air to avoid it with a solemn expression. At this moment, he saw a glass-like substance condensing in the air, surrounding him and beginning to take shape. Crystal style. Hexagonal ceiling techniques. Nani. The material in front of him gave Danzo a great sense of danger. He knew very well that if he did not break this ninjutsu, he might face death. Danzo quickly formed hand seals in the air, his mouth bulged, and made a sound like machine gun fire. Wind style. Vacuum waves. Several wind blades hit the crystals that emerged around him, breaking a large hole in the gradually formed crystal. Danzo also escaped from the hole. The moment he left, Kobayakawa Kazuma's crystal style had already taken shape. The hexagonal ceiling techniques formed a solid crystal block. The crystal almost fell to the ground and broke apart quickly like crystal, along with the thing. What a terrifying ninjutsu. Who is this guy? Looking at the broken crystal blocks behind him, Danzo still has lingering fears. Konoha, when did a ninja who knew this kind of ninjutsu appear? While Danzo was dazed, Kazuma Kobayakawa had already approached Danzo with a kunai. The kunai scratched Danzo's cheek, causing a line of blood. Danzo quickly avoided it, but saw Kazuma Kobayakawa jump up. He stepped on Danzo's face in the air and used the force to reach the high corridor. Here is the path Kazuma Kobayakawa took to sneak into the laboratory. Poof! Danzo, who was heavily stepped on in the face, 
spat out a mouthful of blood, with several teeth mixed in the blood. After rolling in the air for several weeks, he fell heavily to the ground. Who on earth is this guy? How dare you humiliate me like this? Suddenly, Danzo looked up and saw a pair of Magatama Sharingan in a container, and he hammered his hands heavily on the ground. Evil Uchiha, Danzo has taken note of this grudge. After leaving the laboratory, Kobayakawa Kazuma found a deserted place to change his clothes, took off his mask, and sneaked back to the embassy. Not long after, the two shadow clones sent by him to other areas were also forced to be released. Judging from the information brought by the shadow clone, those two locations were Orochimaru's laboratories. However, one laboratory was guarded by Anbu, who was directly under the Hokage, and the other shadow clone met Tsunade, one of the Sanin, outside the laboratory. After a conflict, he was punched to death. Although the harvest tonight was only two ninjutsu scrolls, Kobayakawa Kazuma was already very satisfied. After all, among these two scrolls, one has the A-level Ninjutsu 2 Keku written on it, and the other has the S-level Ninjutsu Flying Thunder God technique written on it. They are secrets belonging to a country. Kobayakawa Kazuma hid the Flying Thunder God technique, and then chose to learn the fire attributed Tokuku. This fire attribute Ninjutsu has explosive properties, and its power and range are far superior to Kobayakawa Kazuma's Dragon Fire technique. The next day, the Uchiha clan's clan became lively. Danzo brought several members of the root organization to the door of the clan leader Uchiha Fugaku's house. Uchiha Fugaku changed into his Jonin uniform and came out. Behind him, Uchiha tribesmen came from all directions in twos and threes. Danzo, you and Jen shouldn't be here. Uchiha Fugaku looked at Danzo calmly. However, the Uchiha clan ninjas behind Fugaku could hardly hold back their anger. That's too much, he openly brought people to the house of the Uchiha clan leader to cause trouble. The village clearly wanted to make the Uchiha clan lose face. If they give in today, the Uchiha clan will never be able to hold their head high in front of the major ninja clans in Konoha. Clan leader, what nonsense are you talking to them? Teach Danzo a lesson, otherwise they will think that our Uchiha clan is easy to bully. An Uchiha ninja wearing a Konoha forehead protector subconsciously opened his Magatama Sharingan, obviously emotional. Uchiha Fugaku raised his hand and made a gesture to stop the agitated Uchiha tribesmen behind him. Uchiha Fugaku, are you still pretending to be stupid? Donzo's eyes suddenly opened wide, and the whites of his eyes were bloodshot. He was so excited that he spit out his saliva. Last night, you Uchiha clan sent someone to sneak into Orochimaru's laboratory privately. You couldn't go on a trip, right? Orochimaru's laboratory. Uchiha Fugaku couldn't help but frown. He had also heard about Orochimaru secretly conducting human experiments. One of the Uchiha tribesmen disappeared, and he suspected that Orochimaru was behind it. Unexpectedly, before the Uchiha clan could question the third Hokage for its negligence, Danzo came to visit. This does not mean that this matter must be related to the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Fugaku explained calmly. HMPH. Danzo had already expected that Uchiha Fugaku would deny it, so he added, that laboratory is set up not far from you Uchiha clan. Last night, besides you Uchiha, who else would appear in that place? Regarding the incident last night, Fugaku and Danzo began to argue. Although the two parties were at war with each other, under the suppression of their respective leaders, they only had a small-scale fight. Kazuma Kobayakawa naturally heard about the conflict between Danzo and the Uchiha clan. He got a shadow clone to study fire style. He worked hard, and he went to the Uchiha clan the day after the conflict. Of course, it was him who went to Orochimaru's laboratory that night, but since Danzo mistakenly thought he was a member of the Uchiha tribe, let him continue to misunderstand him. Master Fugaku, you look very hard lately. After entering the door, Kazuma Kobayakawa saw Uchiha Fugaku with a tired look on his face. Ah, a few days ago, Third Hokage's disciple Orochimaru defected to Konoha. Anbu and Gen discovered several underground laboratories and are busy processing them. Our Uchiha clan has been excluded again. Uchiha Fugaku sighed, after Orochimaru's laboratory was discovered, Konoha's large and small ninja clan who were persecuted by Orochimaru received corresponding comfort. But they are the only ones in the Uchiha clan. 
Even though some members of their clan died tragically at the hands of Orochimaru, they did not receive any compensation, but were still suspected. Master Fugaku, let me tell you the truth. Kobayakawa Kazuma lightly tapped the table and persuaded in a calm tone, you Uchiha clan will always be outsiders in Konoha. Second Hokage Senju Tobarama has hated Uchiha all his life. His disciple Danzo, third Hokage, inherited the will of fire from second Hokage. Perhaps, you were right. Uchiha Fugaku seemed to have been touched by what he said, and took a sip of wine. Recalling the treatment over the years, Uchiha Fugaku had some measure of judgment in his mind. The Uchiha clan would only be cannibalized step by step by Konoha's top management, and being marginalized was just the beginning. In short, think about it carefully. Peace cannot be achieved by swallowing your anger. Today the Uchiha people are humiliated. Tomorrow, the Uchiha people may be greeted by a butcher's knife. Kobayakawa Kazuma said a serious word, and his purpose was to persuade the Uchiha clan came into the arms of Kurigakur. Of course, he could only persuade, and the final decision could only be made by the Uchiha clan. After leaving Uchiha Fugaku's home, Kazuma Kobayakawa walked slowly within the Uchiha clan's territory. It is no different from the streets of Konoha. The vast majority of the Uchiha tribe are ordinary people. Their inherited bloodline limits are not enough to open their eyes. The means of making a living is to work or do some small businesses. Suddenly, Kazuma Kobayakawa stopped. In front of his sight, Uchiha Shisui seemed to be waiting for something. Let me ask, what is the deep hatred between you and the Uchiha clan? Since you are a member of the Uchiha clan, why do you side with Konoha? Seeing Uchiha Shisui stop in front of him, Kobayakawa Kazuma directly asked the doubts in his heart. Konoha and Uchiha should not be separated. Uchiha is a part of Konoha and will always be. Uchiha Shisui looked cold and threatened. Lord Kobayakawa, if you don't listen to my advice, continue to sow discord between the village and the Uchiha clan. Relationship, I will be here to change everything with my Sharingan. Seeing Uchiha Shisui's open mangekyo, Kobayakawa Kazuma was a little panicked. He naturally knew about distinguished heavenly gods. This is an ninjutsu that can change people's minds and is known as the most powerful illusion. If Uchiha Shisui had done that, I'm afraid that his desire to marry and have children would be gone. Are you going to use distinguished heavenly gods on me? Kobayakawa Kazuma chuckled, shook his head, and said calmly, forget it, that technique is actually very restrictive. If you use it on me, what will you use to convince me? Where is Uchiha who is ready to make a move? Uchiha Shisui looked at Kazuma Kobayakawa in confusion. He was stunned for a moment. The man in front of him actually knew all his information. Even the distinguished heavenly gods knew it. Kazuma Kobayakawa is right, the use of distinguished heavenly gods has great limitations. Kazuma Kobayakawa passed by Uchiha Shisui. Suddenly, he turned around and asked. By the way, are your parents still alive? I have never asked Uchiha Shisui's family before because Kazuma Kobayakawa has never seen Shisui's family in the plot, so he thought they were all dead. But if you think about it calmly, that may not be the case. Ha, huh, why are you asking this? Uchiha Shisui closed Mangekyo Sharingan, and he was stunned for a moment. Kobayakawa Kazuma's turn was too blunt. You are too young and you still don't understand some things. Kazuma Kobayakawa shook his head. He asked a few Uchiha tribesmen on the road and then went to Uchiha Shisui's home. A double-story house with green grass in the yard outside, this is where Shisui lives. There was a knock on the door, and about a minute later, a beautiful woman poked her head out of the door and looked at Kobayakawa Kazuma with some caution. The woman's hair is slightly longer, with a princess cut, and her face is pale and sickly, but very beautiful. Excuse me, who are you? The beautiful woman asked. I am Karigakur's permanent ambassador to Konoha village and a friend of Shisui. Kazuma Kobayakawa lied casually and asked, Excuse me, are you Shisui's mother? I'm Shisui's mother, um, what's the matter with you? The beautiful woman still looked at Kazuma Kobayakawa warily, with no intention of opening the door. Kobayakawa Kazuma was so excited that he really found Shisui's mother. To be able to give birth to a genius ninja like Uchiha Shisui, your Uchiha bloodline must be very strong, madam, right? Won't you invite me in for a cup of tea? Kobayakawa Kazuma forced open the door, and then he could see the beautiful woman in full view. 
This is a woman who looks quiet and virtuous at first glance. She has snow white skin and black hair. It seems that just standing there makes people want to love her. It has a light floral scent, which is very pleasant. Kazuma Kobayakawa immediately confirmed the information using the system. Name, Uchiha. Age, 34. Beauty, B+. Ninja qualification, C. Blood inheritance limit, Sharingan. For a moment, a thought of revenge appeared in Kobayakawa Kazuma's mind. Since Uchiha Shisui was unkind, don't blame yourself for being unjust. Uchiha was frightened by Kazuma Kobayakawa's behavior, but when she saw that Kazuma Kobayakawa had no ill intentions, she accepted Kazuma Kobayakawa's unreasonable behavior. After all, he is the ambassador of Kurigakur. As a person of Konoha, he must treat him no matter what. Please help yourself. Uchiha Akatsuki put Kobayakawa Kazuma into the house. Kobayakawa Kazuma took off his shoes at the entrance very rudely and entered Uchiha Shisui's house. The house was clean spotlessly. There was a withered soccer of flower in the vase in the living room, and the smell of sandalwood filled the whole room. Kobayakawa Kazuma couldn't help but be attracted by the spiritual tablet in the living room. There was a black and white photo on the spiritual tablet. In the photo, he was an unremarkable middle-aged man with a bright smile on his face. That was my husband. He died in the Third Ninja War. From then on, I stopped being a ninja. Seeing Kazuma Kobayakawa's curiosity about the spirit tablets, Uchiha Akatsuki took the initiative to explain. Later, Uchiha prepared seaweed pancakes and tea and placed them in front of Kobayakawa Kazuma. Kobayakawa Kazuma couldn't help but pat his thigh. He was a single parent raising a child, and the child was a genius of the Uchiha clan. Ms. Akatsuki, your buff stack is full. It must be difficult for Madam to raise Shisui by herself. Taking advantage of Uchiha's opportunity to bring tea, Kobayakawa Kazuma held her hand. It's a bit hard. The moment she touched Kazuma Kobayakawa's finger, Uchiha retracted her hand as if she was electrocuted. After Kazuma Kobayakawa mentioned Uchiha Shisui, she smiled slightly, with a sense of pride inadvertently added to her face, and explained, Shisui showed extraordinary ninja talents when he was very young, and he is now an outstanding ninja. A ninja who values peace very much because of his father's death. Kobayakawa Kazuma seemed to be moved. He put the tea aside and directly held Uchiha's hand, his tone full of sympathy. Great women like you are so rare. I am now a diplomat of Kurigakur. I have some say in Konoha and Mist Shinobi. If Madam encounters any difficulties, you can talk to me. This time when he grabbed Uchiha's hand, Kobayakawa Kazuma used some strength. After Uchiha failed to pull away subconsciously, she stopped resisting. She lowered her head, a blush appearing on her face. Kazuma Kobayakawa let go of the other party's hand in time. He held the teacup and drank. He chatted with Uchiha about the outside world and boasted about his family history. This is the process of chasing an ordinary kunoichi. As long as you show enough talent and some interest in her, you will have a chance to succeed. Kunoichi like Uchiha Akatsuki has seen the big world, so it will be a little more troublesome, but the principle is the same. We talked until the afternoon, when the sun was about to set, Kobayakawa Kazuma left Shisui's house. Uchiha Akatsuki left the house and sent Kazuma Kobayakawa outside. Kobayakawa Kazuma swaggered out of the Uchiha clan's territory and then returned to the embassy. In the days that followed, Kazuma Kobayakawa began to visit Uchiha Akatsuki more frequently. He would not only come by himself, but also bring Turumi Mei with him. Uchiha Akatsuki was once a special janin, and she had a solid grasp of basic ninjutsu. It was very cost-effective for her to teach Turumi Mei ninjutsu. Using Turumi Mei as an excuse, Kazuma Kobayakawa also successfully lowered Uchiha Akatsuki's defense. In the past two months, Kazuma Kobayakawa and Uchiha Akatsuki's relationship has developed a little, and the two can already get along like friends. As the sun sets, Kazuma Kobayakawa calls Turumi Mei to leave Shisui's house. Uchiha Shisui just finished his mission and returned home, staring at Kazuma Kobayakawa with a vigilant look. Shisui, don't look at your uncle Kobayakawa like that. It's very rude. Seeing Uchiha Shisui's hostile eyes, Uchiha Akatsuki reminded him. Sorry. Mom, Uchiha Shisui quickly put on a smile, and he passed by Kobayakawa Kazuma. It's okay, I don't mind. 
Kobayakawa Kazuma spoke for Uchiha Shisui, and then went back to the embassy to rest. The summer nights began to get shorter. At night, Kobayakawa Kazuma suddenly received a system prompt that Hyuga-chan had given birth. This newborn not only inherited the bloodline limit of the Hyuga clan's white eyes, but also had C-level ninja qualifications. This ninja qualification surpassed all the children of Kobayakawa Kazuma before, and also brought a wave of system rewards to Kobayakawa Kazuma. Name, Kobayakawa Kazuma. Lifespan, 47 years. Chakra, 7.3 cards. Ninja qualification, B1340. Bloodline limit, crystal style, white eyes. Ninjutsu, body replacement technique, 51% completion, transformation technique, 51% completion, clone technique, 51% completion, water style. Mist Shinobi Technique, 40% Completion, Water Style. Water Wave, 40% Completion, Sword Technique. Moon Shadow, 40% Completion, Water Style. Water Cannon, 19% Completion, Summoning Technique, 100% Completion, Fire Style. Dragon Fire Technique, 8% Completion, Shadow Clone Technique, 6% Completion, Fire Style. Head Hard Work, 5% Completion. Kobayakawa Kazuma was in a good mood. After getting up in the morning, he looked at his Byakugan in the mirror. After getting the blood limit of the Byakugan, his eyes did not change in the normal state, and he still had dark brown pupils. When the Byakugan is turned on, the color of the pupil will fade, and only a faint black shadow can be seen. Byakugan. Kobayakawa Kazuma turned on the Byakugan, and his sight passed through the wall and saw all the people in the embassy. Balls of chakra fire appeared in all directions. Kazuma Kobayakawa kept looking at Turumi Mei's room. Judging from her movements, Turumi Mei should be changing clothes. Ming's chakra amount is very good. Even through the Byakugan, Kazuma Kobayakawa could not judge Turumi Mei's chakra amount. However, as long as he compared it with other ninjas in the embassy, he could find that Turumi Mei's chakra was very unusual. After removing the Byakugan state, Kazuma Kobayakawa left the room, changed his clothes, called Turumi Mei, and went to the Hyuga clan. Hyuga Chan just gave birth to a baby last night. At this time, he is weak and he should go and see her. After buying some supplements on the street, Kobayakawa Kazuma took Turumi Mei to the residence of the Hyuga clan. Kurigaku's forehead protector is particularly conspicuous in Konoha village. When Kazuma Kobayakawa arrived at the residence of the Hyuga clan, he was quickly surrounded by the Hyuga clan. Kazuma Kobayakawa ignored the crowd of onlookers and walked straight to Hyuga Hiyashi's home. After all, Hyuga Chan is also a member of the Hyuga clan branch house. It would be more polite to meet the head of the Hyuga clan first. Walking into the courtyard of the head of the Hyuga clan, Kobayakawa Kazuma couldn't help but be slightly startled. He hadn't seen him for ten months, but Hyuga Haruka's skin was whiter and tenderer, as if he had been nourished by a man. Hyuga Haruka also saw Kazuma Kobayakawa, and the moment their eyes met, she couldn't help but froze. Her pupils were shaking, and there seemed to be a faint flicker of light. After a while, Hyuga Haruka bit her lower lip hard. After her expression returned to a cold expression, she said, Kazuma Kobayakawa, this is not the place you should be here. I'm here to see my child, where is Kan Chan? Kobayakawa Kazuma said without any nonsense. After hearing Kazuma Kobayakawa's reasons, Hayuga Haruka could not find any reason to refuse for a while. Just like a mother can't let go of her child, what father can let go of his child? Kazuma Kobayakawa came to see the child, which was reasonable. Kanchan just gave birth to the baby last night. She is resting at home now. When you go, keep a low profile and don't disturb the other clan members. Hayuga warned Kobayakawa and stopped asking. Kazuma Kobayakawa asked Hayuga Haruka where he lived, and then left. Since Hayuga Hiyashi did not come forward, he acquiesced to his request. Presumably, Hayuga Hiyashi would definitely not handle such a scandal involving the Hayuga clan personally. After leaving Hayuga Hiyashi's house, Kobayakawa Kazuma came to the door of Hayuga Chan's house. He knocked on the door, but when no one responded, he took Turumi Mei over the high wall and went directly to the yard. As a Hyuga branch house, Hyuga Chan's residence is not large, with only two narrow looking houses. Although no one opened the door when he knocked on the door, Hyuga Chan's house was not deserted. 
not to mention Hayuga Chan's fiance Hayuga Masato, whom he had met before, even Danzo, the symbol of Konoha, came. The sudden appearance of Kazuma Kobayakawa and Terumi Mei seemed rather abrupt. Masato Hayuga saw Kazuma Kobayakawa appearing in the yard. He wiped the tears on his face with his sleeves, and his face began to become ferocious. Today, Masato Hayuga put on a black ninja uniform, and even had a black cloth tied on his head, looking like a dead warrior. Dai, Kazuma Kobayakawa. Masato Hayuga took out the kanai from his waist. His eyes were already open as his emotions fluctuated violently. Wait a minute, Masato. Suddenly, Hayuga chan's weak voice came from the room. She ran out of the room with her child in her arms. Her lips looked a little white because of her weakness. Masato, I won't allow you to harm Mr. Kobayakawa. Hayuga chan grabbed the wrist in Hayuga Masato's hand, his eyes opened, and he was even ready to hit gentle fist. Chan Chan, why, we have suffered so much because of him, why do you still defend him now? The kanai in Masato Hayuga's hand was trembling, and he didn't understand Hayuga Chan's behavior. Because Mr. Kobayakawa is the father of the child and my husband. Hayuga Chan's voice was weak, but his eyes were extremely firm. When he mentioned Kazuma Kobayakawa, a happy expression flashed across his face. You said he is the father of the child. Your husband. Masato Hayuga seemed to have heard something terrible. He murmured to himself and subconsciously let go of the kanai in his hand. The kanai fell on the grass, stained by dirt. Hayuga Masato left Hayuga Chan's residence step by step like a zombie. It's so embarrassing. You're a loser, your embarrassment to Konoha. Looking at Masato Hayuga leaving, Danzo, who represented the village, only had contempt in his words. In his opinion, because a woman has become like this, Masato Hayuga is no longer qualified to be a Konoha shinobi. Kobayakawa Kazuma ignored Danzo, he just walked over to support Hayuga chan and gently supported Hayuga chan's back. Lord Kobayakawa, this is our child. Hayuga chan showed the child to Kazuma Kobayakawa. Her face was full of pride as a mother and love for her child. Thank you for your hard work. You must have suffered a lot for this child. Kazuma Kobayakawa knew very well that it was not easy for Hayuga Chan. A suddenly pregnant mother would definitely be criticized in such a big family. Hearing Kazuma Kobayakawa's words, Hayuga Chan's eyes suddenly turned red. She tightly clutched the clothes on Kazuma Kobayakawa's chest, lay on Kazuma Kobayakawa's chest, and kept sobbing. The grievances accumulated over the past few days all burst out at once. After returning to the Hayuga clan, Hayuga Chan faced doubts and incomprehension from his elder brother, and the elders of the family demanded that the child be aborted. Later, the child was saved because of the threat of Hayuga Hiyashi killing Miss Shinobi. Kobayakawa Kazuma, today, I allow you to see Hayuga Chan. Danzo made a speech like a protagonist, sternly warning, but. Don't roll your eyes at the idea, Hayuga Chan and her children are both Konoha the property is a person of Konoha in life, and a dead person of Konoha in death. After saying that, Danzo also left. Kobayakawa Kazuma asked Turumi Mei to cook. He hugged Hayuga Chan, and the two told their own stories these days, and they did not leave until it was almost dark. Brother Yijun, when will we take Sister Kanover to live together? Turumi Mei suddenly asked on the way. Although she and Hayuga Chan didn't get along for a long time, Hayuga Chan was Turumi Mei's only friend in Konoha. It will take some time. Kobayakawa Kazuma sighed, feeling a little unsure. Hayuga Chan is a member of the Hayuga clan. Both Konoha and the Hayuga clan watch him very closely, and there is absolutely no way they will be handed over to him easily. Maybe the day to pick up Hayuga Chan will have to wait until a long time later. At present, it seems that only through pressure from Kurigakur can Hayuga Chan be separated from the Hayuga clan. Phew, not long after leaving the residence of the Hayuga clan, the sound of shurikens piercing the air broke the silent night. A masked ninja launched an attack without any explanation. He ran towards Kazuma Kobayakawa and quickly formed seals with his hands. Fire style, great fireball technique. The masked ninja spit out a fireball and attacked Kazuma Kobayakawa. Kazuma Kobayakawa hurriedly protected Turumi Mei behind him. He formed a seal with one hand, and the water and fireballs ejected from his mouth cancelled each other out. Water style. Water chaos. 
Water and fire collided with each other, stirring up white steam that disturbed the field of vision and emitting bursts of burning heat. Water style. Mist Shinobi technique. Kobayakawa Kazuma once again formed a seal with one hand, and with the help of the water vapor on the battlefield, the Mist Shinobi technique took shape almost instantly, covering a radius of several hundred meters. Roll your eyes. In the thick fog, Kobayakawa Kazuma opened his eyes, and the color of his pupils quickly faded, almost turning into pure white. This allowed him to clearly observe the position of his opponent even in the thick fog. It's actually him. Kobayakawa Kazuma was shocked and started to get nervous. The moment his Bayakugan opened, Kobayakawa Kazuma realized something was wrong. His attacker was none other than Danzo who showed up at Hayuga-chan's house during the day. Did he find out? I was the one who stepped on his face in the laboratory that night. A very bad idea came to Kobayakawa Kazuma's mind, but he quickly gave up the bad idea. If Danzo had really confirmed his identity, he would have taken people to the embassy to prosecute him, so why bother pretending to be a masked man here? Danzo didn't even use his best win style, obviously not wanting to reveal his identity. Obviously, Danzo has no definite evidence that he is the one who invaded Orochimaru's laboratory. Today's behavior is just a test. Thinking of this, Kazuma Kobayakawa quickly gave up the idea of using crystal style. It seemed that he could only handle this matter without exposing the limits of blood succession. The thick fog interfered with Danzo's vision, but Danzo could still vaguely see the shadow of Kobayakawa Kazuma, and he frowned slightly. Fire style. Great fireball technique. Danzo repeated his old trick, he quickly formed a seal and performed the great fireball technique. With the help of the high temperature of the great fireball, the thick fog created by Kobayakawa Kazuma quickly dissipated, almost disappearing within a moment, and the field of vision became wider again. Danzo used the teleportation technique to come to Kazuma Kobayakawa, and stabbed Kazuma Kobayakawa's body with the kunai in his hand. However, at the moment of the stabbing, his expression changed slightly. This figure was the most ordinary clone technique. Before he had time to think too much, a small flame flew from the side to his eyes. The flame was not very fast and even looked a bit light. Suddenly, Danzo, who had seen the world, showed a horrified expression. Fire style. Head hard. The flames exploded at a relatively close distance from Danzo and spread like a bomb. The power of the explosion stirred up a large area of dust, naturally involving Danzo in it. This move was hard, and Kazuma Kobayakawa did not use all his strength. With his current amount of chakra, he can create a fire bath within a radius of 20 meters after working hard. Danzo barely managed to protect his body, but the aftermath of the explosion sent him flying backwards. After rolling several times, he hit a tree trunk and barely managed to stabilize his body. It's hard to imagine that this guy was still a chunin last year. What happened in the past two years to make him improve so much? Danzo looked at Kazuma Kobayakawa in the distance and couldn't help but look serious. Without using his best wind style, he is no match for Kazuma Kobayakawa. However, after some testing, the results of some things were known, and there was no need to stay any longer. Taking out a smoke bomb from his ninja bag, Danzo released the smoke and escaped while the smoke obscured his vision. Kobayakawa Kazuma breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, Danzo was just here to test, otherwise, he might not be able to win against this guy. Mei, let's go. Kobayakawa Kazuma called Turumi Mei who was hiding behind the tree trunk. Turumi Mei then carefully poked his head out from behind the tree trunk. He asked Kazuma Kobayakawa, Brother, who was that person just now and why did he attack us? Who knows? Kobayakawa Kazuma patted Turumi Mei on the head without explaining anything specifically. Although Danzo's test tonight failed, Kazuma Kobayakawa knew that once the seeds of doubt were planted, it would be difficult to get rid of them. The feud between him and Danzo was finally settled. Chapter 71 After returning to the embassy as if nothing had happened, Kobayakawa Kazuma went about his daily activities. He wrote a letter about what happened tonight and sent it to Watermelon Mountain Pig Ghost through a channel. The next morning, Kobayakawa Kazuma got up early. He called Turumi Mei, and the two went to the residence of the Uchiha clan to get in touch with the Uchiha Akatsuki. Kobayakawa Kazuma was still very concerned about this female ninja who could give birth to Uchiha Shisui. After all, 
the bloodline of the Uchiha clan is well known in the ninja world. As soon as he walked out of the most prosperous neighborhood of Konoha, Kobayakawa Kazuma saw three ninjas punching and kicking another ninja. There is also a chain of contempt between ninjas. Ninjas from different camps and ninjas with different concepts may have conflicts, and fighting is a very common thing. What Konoha's wealthy Uchiha clan? Look, does he look like a dog? Ha ha ha. A Konoha shinobi with a shimat hairstyle stepped on the ninja on the ground, and the three laughed out loud. The ninja on the ground raised a handful of dust, which blinded the shimat ninja's eyes. When the other party lost his sight, he picked up his fist and hit the other party in the face. Before the fist landed on the face, the ninja was caught by the other two, and his hands and feet were fixed and unable to move. The shimat ninja was enraged by his resistance and punched the other party in the face one after another. Kobayakawa Kazuma originally didn't intend to meddle in other people's business. To be honest, there were countless ninja fights happening every day in the ninja world, and he was not in the mood to meddle in other people's business. But when he heard the name of the Uchiha clan, he suddenly became interested. After all, the friendship with the Uchiha clan is more important, and you still have to find opportunities to improve your favor occasionally. We are all ninjas from the same village, there is no need to be so ruthless. Just after Shimat punched the opponent several times in succession, Kobayakawa Kazuma stopped him. It turned out to be Mist Shinobi's idiot. We are teaching a lesson to the guys in our own village. What does it have to do with you Mist Shinobi? Shimat Ninja shook off Kobayakawa Kazuma and asked confidently. He raised his fist and hit him. All the prominent figures in Konoha village basically know that Kobayakawa Kazuma exists, but ordinary ninjas are different. They perform tasks outside the village all year round and are relatively close to the news. Murakami, just teach my future brother-in-law a lesson, don't make it difficult for me. Another ninja saw Terumi Mei on the side and couldn't help laughing. He hadn't touched a woman in half a year of missions, but after seeing Terumi Mei, his desire was ignited. Forget it, since Serutobi Hiruzen doesn't have time to teach you, I'll teach you for him. Kobayakawa Kazuma originally wanted to resolve the matter peacefully, but now it seems that if he doesn't show some strength, these people won't talk well. Drawing and sheathing the sword, Kobayakawa Kazuma did it in one go, and with just one sword, he chopped down three chunin of Konoha. Ninja Technique Moon Shadow Now Kazuma Kobayakawa can summon two sword shadows with just one slash. Ming, let's go. Kobayakawa Kazuma put the ninja sword back into the scabbard. The back of the sword he used would not hurt the lives of these chunin. As for the Uchiha tribesman who was beaten, he paid no attention to it. Yes, brother, Terumi may hug Kazuma Kobayakawa's arm, a bit coquettishly. The rescued Uchiha clan ninja was stunned. The three in front of him were all veteran chunin in Konoha. They had been chunin for at least three years. But now, these three veteran chunin were chopped down by Kobayakawa Kazuma with just one strike. Is this the same Kazuma Kobayakawa he met during the Chunin exam two years ago? Kobayakawa Kazuma, do you still recognize me? The Uchiha man quickly rushed to Kobayakawa Kazuma's side and walked side by side with Kobayakawa Kazuma. Some impressions, Kobayakawa Kazuma said truthfully. He had met many people, so it was difficult to remember everyone. I am Masato Uchiha, a strong Uchiha who opened the Sharingan when I was 12 years old. In the Chunin exam two years ago, your first opponent was me. As he said that, Masato Uchiha also opened the Sharingan, the Magatama appeared in the pupils, awakening the memory of Kobayakawa Kazuma. It's really emotional to say it. Unknowingly, two years have passed, and I didn't realize how strong you were until today. I feel relieved that I lost at your hands. Uchiha Masato was chattering to the side, and Kobayakawa Yijun only found him annoying and had no time to pay attention to this guy. Sure enough, even in the Uchiha clan, which is aloof in general, there are still such talkative guys. After entering the Uchiha clan's territory, Masato Uchiha still didn't calm down. He actually talked about his Chunin exam experience, and finally came to a conclusion. In the Chunin exam that year, it was not that I was too weak, but that Kazuma Kobayakawa was too strong. Brother Masato, have your mission finally been completed? When Kobayakawa Kazuma and others entered the street of the Uchiha clan, Uchiha Izumi, who was buying snacks on the street, suddenly walked towards Uchiha Masato. Today, 
Uchiha wears a butterfly hairpin, which makes her look even cuter. Uchiha Izumi was still a little scared of Kobayakawa Kazuma. She deliberately avoided Kobayakawa Kazuma and ran to Uchiha Masato. Kazuma Kobayakawa looked at Masato Uchiha in surprise. He didn't expect that this talkative guy actually had a friendship with Izumi. Looking at the situation, the friendship was probably not ordinary. Masato, Kobayakawa Kazuma cleared his throat. He patted Uchiha Masato's shoulder and said in the tone of an old friend, To be honest, I still miss the battle with you two years ago. I haven't seen you like this in a long time. A strong opponent. I must fight again when I have time. After receiving Kazuma Kobayakawa's affirmation, Masato Uchiha showed a sharp smile. He stretched out his hand and gave Kazuma Kobayakawa a high five. Looking back, Masato Uchiha proudly pointed at Kazuma Kobayakawa and introduced to Izumi, this guy is Kazuma Kobayakawa. He is a real Kurigakur genius, with strength comparable to Jonin, and he is also my lifelong enemy. My cousin, Uchiha Izumi, although she has not graduated from the ninja school, she will definitely become a great female ninja. After introducing Kazuma Kobayakawa, Masato Uchiha introduced Izumi to Kazuma Kobayakawa. Kobayakawa Kazuma smiled and nodded to Uchiha Izumi, and Izumi responded politely to Kobayakawa Kazuma. She looked at the other party curiously. After Uchiha Masato's introduction, it seemed that Kobayakawa Kazuma's image suddenly became much taller. This is how people evaluate a person. Many times, one or two compliments from an acquaintance are better than countless self-explanations. After exchanging pleasantries with Izumi, Kobayakawa Kazuma took Terumi Mei to Uchiha Shisui's home to learn ninjutsu in the Uchiha clan's clan, which could avoid the surveillance of Konoha and Mist Shinobi to a certain extent. Even if Terumi Mei accidentally reveals the blood inheritance limit during the use of ninjutsu, it is not a big deal as long as it is handled properly. Uchiha Masato and Uchiha Izumi walked together. Along the way, Uchiha Masato talked in detail about his fight with Kobayakawa Kazuma that year. Speaking of the Chunin exam that year, it was indeed a crouching tiger, hidden dragon. Masato Uchiha boasted with some emotion, even I, a strong person who opened my eyes at the age of 12, couldn't take advantage and ended up with half a move. He almost lost to Kazuma Kobayakawa. Masato ni is so awesome. Uchiha Izumi praised Uchiha Masato very seriously. The morning sunshine was slightly softer, and the surroundings were filled with the chirping of cicadas, full of summer atmosphere. Are you going out to do a mission again? Shisui. Just arriving in front of the courtyard, Kobayakawa Kazuma happened to meet Uchiha Shisui who was out. Yes, as the Anbu directly under third generation, I am usually very busy. Uchiha Shisui nodded towards Kobayakawa and the others, and warned with a cold face, don't try to provoke the Uchiha clan and the village through my mother. She has stopped being a ninja and has no say in the Uchiha clan. Quote, don't worry, I'm not that interested in the relationship between the Uchiha clan and Konoha. Kobayakawa Kazuma smiled, he passed Turumi Mei and Uchiha Shisui, and asked Uchiha Akatsuki to guide Turumi Mei. Uchiha put on mesh ninja lining, and then practiced ninjutsu with Turumi Mei in the yard. Yes, Ming, that's the energy. Uchiha blocked Turumi Mei's fist with her palm. She couldn't help but be shocked by Turumi Mei's progress. After only one month of learning ninjutsu, Turumi Mei has already learned the three ninjutsus of stand-in, transformation and clone, and her physical skills are also somewhat impressive. Kazuma Kobayakawa watched silently. Uchiha Akatsuki had an advantage. During the fight, Kazuma Kobayakawa couldn't help but feast his eyes on the extent of the shaking. She sweated a little after exercising, and the sweat highlighted Uchiha Akatsuki's snow-white neck, which was even more shiny. The mesh-like tight-fitting black clothes, combined with Akatsuki's high ponytail, gave her a heroic look during battle. Turumi Mei attacked all the way, and Uchiha resisted while retreating. Suddenly, she stepped on a raised stone under her feet. Suddenly, Uchiha's foot slipped, her body became unstable and she fell down. Kazuma Kobayakawa, who had been prepared for a long time, had quick eyesight and quick hands. A large amount of chakra erupted under his feet, and he easily hugged Uchiha Akatsuki. Uchiha smelled Kazuma Kobayakawa's breath. It was the first time since her husband passed away that she was held in a man's arms. The touch and temperature between the skin made her feel a little nostalgic. 
everyone gets lonely, and Uchiha is no exception. Realizing something was wrong with her body, Uchiha's face turned slightly red and she broke out of Kobayakawa Kazuma's arms. I've caused you trouble. Uchiha distanced herself from Kazuma Kobayakawa and apologized to Kazuma Kobayakawa with a half bow. It must be because of your hard work, madam. You can take the time to guide Mei to learn ninjutsu. I should thank you. Kazuma Kobayakawa put his arm around Uchiha Akatsuki's shoulders and took Uchiha Akatsuki back to the room to rest. Having been married three or four times, he keenly realized that the time had come. Ming, please wait outside the room for a while, and I'll help Akatsuki get a cup of tea. Kobayakawa Kazuma warned Turumi Mei, and then closed the door with a clang. Wait, what are you going to do? After a while, the sound of water came from the room. Uchiha held the coffee table and hummed a familiar tune. She turned her head slightly, her face slightly red, and she still did not dare to look at her husband's spiritual tablet in the living room. I'm sorry, dear, maybe I'm too lonely. A hot tear fell from the corner of Uchiha's eyes, and there was a slight sound of water dripping on the ground. About an hour later, Kazuma Kobayakawa finally finished his tea. He came out of the room and called to Rumi Mei. Ming, let's just come here today. Let's go back first. Kobayakawa Kazuma closed the door. Uchiha, who usually sent Kazuma Kobayakawa away, was silent today. Brother, your clothes are torn. Turumi Mei reminded. Kazuma Kobayakawa's face turned red, and he patted Turumi Mei on the back of the head. Children should stay out of adults' matters. Turumi Mei puffed up her cheeks in anger and responded, I'm 18 years old. Kazuma Kobayakawa was slightly startled, and he was quite emotional. Yes, before you know it, Turumi Mei is already 18 years old. Since coming to Konoha to take up the post of ambassador, Kobayakawa Kazuma is quite satisfied with his current living situation. Within this year, not only did he and Hayuga-chan give birth to a child with the Byakugan blood inheritance limit, but he also married Uchiha Akatsuki the woman deepened her friendship. Until today, Kazuma Kobayakawa finally got to know Uchiha Akatsuki further. Walking through the streets of the Uchiha clan, Kazuma Kobayakawa suddenly stopped and even his body stopped slightly. Miss Shinobi Guy, I advise you not to meddle in other people's business. This is Konoha's family matter. Danzo walked up to Kobayakawa Kazuma and warned in a deep voice. In front of Kobayakawa Kazuma's sight, Uchiha Masato was holding a kanai in his hand, facing two rude ninjas alone, his legs were trembling, one Tomo Sharingan had been opened. Did he make any mistakes? Kazuma Kobayakawa asked. Uchiha Masato attacked three ninjas from the Serutobi clan this morning, causing three people to be seriously injured. Such ninjas who blatantly violate the will of fire must be punished with the severest punishment. Danzo spoke righteously, but his eyes wandered on Kazuma Kobayakawa. Kobayakawa Kazuma couldn't help but smile. He was the one who chopped down the three Serutobi clan ninjas this morning. He used the back of the knife to avoid serious injuries. Moreover, Danzo did not arrest people earlier late, but waited until he was about to appear before taking action. Obviously, this behavior was directed at him, but I don't know if there was any instruction from Serutobi Hiruzen behind it. This is a test, a test about the bottom line. Even if Kazuma Kobayakawa doesn't take action today, Danzo will still do something else. May, go to Shisui's house. Kobayakawa Kazuma warned Turumi Mei, and then drew out the ninja's sword with one hand. As Kurigaku's talker, at least on the surface, no one dares to directly attack Kazuma Kobayakawa and Turumi Mei. Even if Danzo wants to deal with Kazuma Kobayakawa, he has to wait for Kazuma Kobayakawa to make a mistake. Turumi Mei ran towards Uchiha Shisui's house. Kazuma Kobayakawa looked at Danzo and said coldly, I have long wanted to learn from Master Second Hokage's disciple. Since you insist on doing this, of course you can. A sinister smile appeared on Danzo's face. As long as Kobayakawa Kazuma takes action first, then even Serutobi Hiruzen can't say anything to him. After that night of testing, Danzo was already 70% certain that the person who humiliated him in the laboratory was probably Kazuma Kobayakawa in front of him. In this case, let's take advantage of the name of the Uchiha clan and also take care of the Mist Shinobi guys. Danzo took out the kanai, opened his mouth, and attached a layer of sharp blade formed by wind style to the kanai, making the kanai look like a long sword. 
The kanai flew out and flew in the direction of Kazuma Kobayakawa. Donzo's figure disappeared, and with the help of Chakra, he was able to run on the wall. The kanai was dodged by Kobayakawa Kazuma, and the powerful wind style exploded a pit in the back. There was still dirt swirling in the pit like a whirlwind. Danzo followed the kanai, quickly formed seals with his hands, and finally spit out a few wind bombs. Wind style. Vacuum wave. Kobayakawa Kazuma quickly formed a seal with his hands, and as the last yin seal ended, Ten Shadow Clone appeared neatly in front of Danzo. How did he know Konoha's Shadow Clone? Danzo's first reaction was that the thing Kazuma Kobayakawa stole from the laboratory was the Shadow Clone technique, but then he gave up this idea. How could there be such a coincidence? Yes, it must be the evil Uchiha Fugaku, the guy who taught the Shadow Clone technique to Miss Shinobi, Uchiha betrayed Konoha. Shadow Clone Technique Danzo also made a few seals quickly. He and Kazuma Kobayakawa separated out ten Shadow Clones, and let these Shadow Clone drag the Shadow Clone, and then went straight to Kazuma Kobayakawa. The sound of the collision of Kanai and Ninja Swords kept ringing. Kazuma Kobayakawa and Danzo fought together, and the collision between Taijutsu was nothing fancy. Kobayakawa Kazuma couldn't help but frown. Obviously, Danzo, Konoha's second in command, was more than just a lookalike. In terms of physical skills alone, she was not necessarily his opponent. However, fortunately, my chakra amount is large enough. If I continue to fight like this, I will always be able to win against Danzo. Ninja Technique Moon Shadow Kazuma Kobayakawa threw a kanai, and while Danzo was avoiding the kanai, he injected water attribute chakra into the ninja sword in his hand. A sword slashed out, and two shadow blades were cut from the side along with the ninja sword. Snort. Danzo snorted coldly. He raised his kanai and blocked the two shadow blades. He immediately lowered his waist and retreated, causing the real ninja sword to pass by his scalp. He only sacrificed a few hairs and perfectly avoided the moon shadow. Ninja. Moon shadow. Seeing that Danzo had escaped the first attack, Kobayakawa Kazuma immediately used the teleportation technique to come behind Danzo, and then used the moon shadow sword technique again. After raising the completion degree of the Tsukikage sword technique to 40%, Kobayakawa Kazuma was able to slash the Tsukikage three times in a row, which can be regarded as three consecutive swords, a critical strike. Nani, Danzo once again blocked Kazuma Kobayakawa's attack with a kanai, but this time he was in a panic, and a shadow blade didn't completely dodge and almost hit him in the face. The bandage on his right eye was cut off, and there was a shallow blood mark on his face. Danzo quickly covered his eyes. He didn't want his secret to be exposed to the eyes of the Uchiha clan. That's it for today, you win, Miss Shinobi Guy. Danzo took a few steps back. Seeing that Kobayakawa Kazuma had no intention of attacking again, he ordered several members of the gen behind him, forget about the Uchiha clan, let's go. Kazuma Kobayakawa put away his ninja sword, and he didn't chase him, letting Danzo leave. Although I don't know why Danzo left in a hurry, today, Kobayakawa Kazuma's goal has been achieved. He deliberately used the Shadow Clone technique just to arouse the suspicion of the Uchiha clan and Konoha. Taking the opportunity to mess up the relationship between the village and the Uchiha clan, it would be great if we could take the opportunity to win over a few women with better bloodlines from the Uchiha clan. For example, Uchiha Makoto who can give birth to Indra bloodline. Thank you. Kazuma Kobayakawa. Because of me, you offended Danzo and got into big trouble. Uchiha Masato leaned his back against the wall and thanked him. After Danzo left, his legs were already weak. After all, that was Lord Danzo, the veritable second in command in Konoha village, known for his cruel methods. Anyone facing this kind of guy would be unable to help but feel weak in their legs. However, what surprised Masato Uchiha even more was that Kazuma Kobayakawa was so strong. The taijutsu battle between Kobayakawa Kazuma and Danzo was so fast that even he, a powerful Uchiha with his eyes open, could not completely catch it. It doesn't matter. Kazuma Kobayakawa shook his head. He actually didn't care much about offending Danzo. With Karigaku's protection, even if Konoha wanted to attack him, he would have to find a suitable reason, so even if he offended Danzo, he would be safe for the time being. However, seeing that the relationship between Konoha and Uchiha is getting worse and worse, 
they must hurry up when it comes to having children and strive to get Akatsuki pregnant as soon as possible. Uchiha Izumi squeezed out from the crowd. She thanked Kazuma Kobayakawa, then walked to Uchiha Masato and comforted him. On the side, Uchiha Fugaku, who had already started to watch the battle but had not made a move, suddenly walked forward. He stared coldly at Kazuma Kobayakawa with a very embarrassed look on his face. Kobayakawa Kazuma, do you know what you have done? By attacking Lord Danzo, you are bringing injustice to the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Fugaku said coldly, fear and anger intertwined in his mind, making him vaguely want to surrender. Kazuma Kobayakawa asked the village for forgiveness. However, after just a moment, Uchiha Fugaku gave up on this idea. Offending Kazuma Kobayakawa here will do no good to the Uchiha clan. Stop talking. Before Kazuma Kobayakawa could speak, Masato Uchiha on the side didn't know where he got the courage. He rushed forward and grabbed Uchiha Fugaku by the collar, yelling and questioning. Aren't you the leader of the Uchiha clan? Didn't you swear to protect the Uchiha clan? But where were you when the ninjas of the Uchiha clan were bullied by the village? My mother, when my mother was chopped by them, where are you? Ah, answer me, Lord Patriarch. Facing a series of rhetorical questions from Masato Uchiha, Uchiha Fugaku couldn't help but lower his head with guilt. Facing the village and Uchiha who was ready to make a move, he had tried his best. As the clan leader, he has the obligation to protect every Uchiha clan member, but as a member of the village, he cannot openly disobey the village's orders. I don't know since when, the relationship between the village and Uchiha has become like this. As the patriarch, he can only deal with the two parties and be a tailor in the relationship between the two parties. But tinkering is not the answer. The relationship between the village and the Uchiha clan seems to be irreparable. I'm sorry, Masato, I also have difficulties here. Uchiha Fugaku clenched his fists hard, and he felt a sense of powerlessness. Seeing Uchiha Fugaku apologize, Uchiha Masato couldn't say anything more. However, he hates this rhetoric. Because of the difficulties, can he let the village do whatever he wants to Uchiha? Forget it, I'm going to send my mother to the hospital. Masato Uchiha didn't make any more trouble. He returned to the room and left after a while carrying an injured woman on his back. Many Uchiha tribesmen, including Uchiha Fugaku, lowered their heads and fell silent without saying a word, as if they were performing a silent pantomime. Kazuma Kobayakawa patted Uchiha Fugaku on the shoulder. Uchiha Makoto, who was wearing an apron, nodded slightly and said to Kazuma Kobayakawa, thank you for today. Kobayakawa Kazuma waved his hand, he went back to Akatsuki's house, called Turumi Mei, and returned to the embassy. In the room, Uchiha faced her husband's spiritual tablet, feeling an unconcealable feeling of guilt in her heart. She blushed slightly and said softly, I'm sorry, honey, but you've been gone for too long. Uchiha Akatsuki's guilt towards her husband is mixed with a lot of water. The day passed before I knew it, and as the sun disappeared, Konoha village began to calm down. Inside the gate, a masked mist Shinobi Chunin was kneeling on one knee, seemingly waiting for Kazuma Kobayakawa. What happened? Kazuma Kobayakawa asked. A big shot from Mist Shinobi is here. He is waiting in the hall and says he wants to see you. Chunin replied. I understand. Kazuma Kobayakawa asked Turumi Mei to go back to the room first, and he rushed to the living room immediately. Long time no see, Kazuma Kobayakawa. Hoshigaki Kisame greeted Kazuma Kobayakawa, showing his jagged teeth. Why are you here, Hoshigaki Kisame Senpei? Kobayakawa Kazuma couldn't help but frown. Hoshigaki Kisame is an important person under the watermelon dolphin demon. If he doesn't have something important, he shouldn't come to Konoha. Maybe, the days of leisurely leisurely travel are over. You'd better not ask. I don't want this mission to be associated with too many people. Knowing the secret will have to bear the consequences. Hoshigaki Kisame did not answer. He just chatted with Kobayakawa Kazuma about the current situation in Konoha. Whatever Hoshigaki Kisame asked, Kobayakawa Kazuma would say what he said. If there was someone he couldn't answer, he would also look for the information left by Juji Naoya. Hoshigaki Kisame stayed here until late at night. After looking through a lot of documents, he seemed to have gotten the information he wanted to know. He put the scroll with the information aside, 
sat cross-legged on the ground, and then took out a few soldiers' food pills and ate them. I really envy you, Kazuma Kobayakawa. Hoshigaki Kisume couldn't help but said, your mission can be regarded as the most peaceful mission among all Janin. Kurigakur is even more chaotic now than when you left. Kobayakawa Kazuma's face darkened, but all three of his wives were still staying in Kurigakur. My family, are they okay? Kazuma Kobayakawa asked quickly. You don't have to worry about it for now. Except for Water Lily being recruited by the village as a ninja, your family is fine. Hoshigaki Kisame sighed and said, Just pray that I can complete the mission smoothly. As long as this mission is completed successfully, now, Kurigakur will have an overwhelming advantage against those bloodline ninjas, and the rebellion in the village will soon end. Then, I wish you good luck. Kobayakawa Kazuma didn't say much. He didn't know what Hoshigaki Kisami's mission was. Although he was vaguely worried about Water Lily, Kobayakawa Kazuma knew what he should do and what he could do. The wisest choice is to wait until you are ready to return to Kurigakur. Hoshigaki Kisame left the embassy, quickly contacted the spies in the village, and took action. After realizing that the situation in Kurigakur began to change, Kobayakawa became more concerned about having children. Every day, Kazuma Kobayakawa would take Terumime to Uchiha Akatsuki's home. After training for a period of time, he would start the business of making babies. On the sofa, wooden bed, and bathroom in Uchiha Shisui's home, the struggling figure of Kazuma Kobayakawa is everywhere. At the same time, Kobayakawa Kazuma also discovered a detail, that is, Shisui's father's spiritual tablet was moved at some point, and became, facing the wall and thinking about his faults. Uchiha seems to have started to take the initiative. As time goes by, she and Kobayakawa Kazuma get to know each other better and better. In the blink of an eye, five days passed. During these five days, Kazuma Kobayakawa came to Uchiha Shisui's home early every morning. The frequency of his visits to the Uchiha clan has more than doubled than before. After another day of hard work, Kazuma Kobayakawa left with Turumi Mei. The sun was shining golden, and he happened to meet Uchiha Shisui who was returning home from a mission on the road. Kobayakawa Kazuma, have you heard? Uchiha Shisui looked at Kobayakawa Kazuma and hesitated to speak. What did you hear? Kazuma Kobayakawa asked. He really didn't hear anything and didn't know what Uchiha Shisui wanted to say. Last night, Master Hiyashi was attacked. Two members of the Hyuga clan died. We Anbu stopped the attack in time. When we chased after him, we only found a few corpses. Seeing that Kazuma Kobayakawa was indeed unaware, Uchiha Shisui explained, there was a man who killed his companions to prevent them from being captured alive. Even the leader of the Hyuga clan can be attacked, so Yukonaha should be more careful. Kobayakawa Kazuma shook his head, and he called Terumime to leave. Kobayakawa Kazuma had some vague thoughts in his mind. A few days ago, Hoshigaki Kisume said that there was a mission to be carried out, and maybe it was this mission. Killing compatriots in order to prevent information leakage is also very similar to the practice in Blood Mist. However, Kobayakawa Kazuma did not care about these matters. Since Konoha did not obtain the information, then he, the ambassador, could stay out of the matter. You also have to be careful. Anyone who goes against Konoha will not end well. Uchiha Shisui warned. Kobayakawa Kazuma didn't pay much attention to it, just thinking that he must hurry up to get Shisui's mother pregnant. Giving birth is like this, it is a matter that requires a lot of patience. If you plant seeds for a while, as long as there are no problems on both sides, you can always get pregnant. Uchiha Shisui left, and so did Kazuma Kobayakawa. On the way, he met Uchiha Itachi again, and he could notice that the way Uchiha Itachi looked at him was getting colder and colder, even filled with hatred. Both Uchiha Shisui and Uchiha Itachi are madmen who firmly believe in the will of fire. Kobayakawa Kazuma does not want to provoke these two difficult guys for the time being. He is currently just thinking about having children. If he acquires more blood and gives birth to more children, his strength will become even stronger. After taking some time, Kobayakawa Kazuma went to the Hyuga clan again and went to Hyuga chan's house. Turumi Mei was preparing meals in the kitchen, and Hyuga chan was nestled next to Kazuma Kobayakawa, breastfeeding her newborn child. Master Yijun, please give this child a name. Hyuga chan suddenly said. 
Kobayakawa Kazuma is not good at choosing names. The previous children were born according to Nymphaeum and the others' ideas. Let's call him Kosei. Kazuma Kobayakawa suddenly remembered the name of a certain Japanese comic hero and said casually. Ko sense Kobayakawa, that's a good name. Hayuga Chan excitedly pinched the nose of the baby in his arms in a very affectionate manner. Chan Chan, wait two months, let's have another child. Kobayakawa Kazuma brushed Hayuga Chan's hair and said softly, Then, one day, I will take you back to Kurigakur. Well, if it's for you, I'm willing to have a baby. Hayuga Chan agreed softly. For Kobayakawa Kazuma, to become stronger, he has to have more children, and in Konoha village, it has been difficult for him to find better Kunoichi than Hayuga Chan and Uchiha Makoto. Hayuga Haruka may have better blood than Hayuga Chan, but if you want to touch Hayuga Haruka, it means you may suffer the wrath of Hayuga Hiyashi. Just when Kobayakawa was really enjoying the warm atmosphere of his family, Hayuga Hiyashi opened the courtyard door and walked in on his own. Are you really here, Kazuma Kobayakawa? Hayuga Hiyashi was wearing a white training suit with a brown coat on top. He quietly stared at Kazuma Kobayakawa. The majesty of the head of the family was clearly revealed. Brother. Dot sir. Hayuga Chan sat aside, feeling quite uneasy under the gaze of Hayuga Hiyashi. Hayuga Hiyashi frowned. Hayuga Chan, who was willing to devote his life to the Hayuga clan, now gave birth to a child for a guy who blackmailed the Hayuga clan. This is, what an irony. What are you doing, Mr. Hiyashi? Kazuma Kobayakawa stood up and asked Hayuga Hiyashi. I was attacked three nights ago. Do you know about this? Hayuga Hiyashi's voice was soft, but his question made the air quiet for a moment. Kobayakawa Kazuma didn't want to admit it, but since Hayuga Hiyashi came to him specifically for verification, it meant that Hayuga Hiyashi had already obtained some conclusive evidence. These evidence may have been discovered by Hayuga Hiyashi when he was attacked. Honestly, I didn't expect that the target of their mission was you. Kobayakawa Kazuma replied truthfully, Since ordinary lies cannot fool Hayuga Hiyashi, there is no need to lie. Is that so? Hayuga Hiyashi didn't ask any more questions. He took the child from Hayuga Chan's arms, his face full of love. I will not pursue what you did to Hayuga Chan, but this child belongs to the Hayuga clan, and you can never take it away. After holding the child for a while, Hayuga Hiyashi suddenly emphasized. Kobayakawa Kazuma didn't reply. He knew the rules of the Hayuga clan very well. When the child reaches a certain age, he will be engraved with a caged bird, like Hayuga Chan. However, this child is still young after all, and there are still many years left before he can be branded as caged bird. In the meantime, he can do a lot. As long as he is strong enough, it is not impossible to take away Hayuga Chan, let alone this child. Brother, the meal is ready. Suddenly, Turumi Mei's voice came from the kitchen. Want to have dinner together? Hiyashi, Kazuma Kobayakawa asked coldly. Hayuga Hiyashi did not refuse. He had lunch with Kazuma Kobayakawa and his family before preparing to leave. When he walked to the gate, Hayuga Hiyashi suddenly turned around and said, The shadow clone technique scroll that I kept is missing. Kobayakawa Kazuma frowned slightly. He knew that Hayuga Hiyashi had discovered the theft of shadow clone technique, and Hayuga Chan naturally became the subject of Hayuga Hiyashi's main suspicion. Maybe you lost it yourself. Kobayakawa Kazuma said perfunctorily to Hayuga Hiyashi. Since Hayuga Chan mentioned it at this time, he had no intention of pursuing it. You just need to give the other person a step down. Maybe, it was stolen last night when we were fighting with that gang. Hayuga Hiyashi didn't bother too much. He didn't want Hayuga Chan to be punished by the clan again because of this incident. Hayuga Chan has sacrificed too much for the Hayuga clan, and he, the older brother, doesn't want his sister to suffer further persecution. Hayuga Hiyashi left, and Kazuma Kobayakawa also left Hayuga Chan's house after dark. The moon was as bright as water, and the wind on the mountaintop seemed particularly cold. Hoshigaki Kisame punched the big tree next to him. The tree they hugged trembled, and fallen leaves fell to the ground. I thought it was not a difficult task, but I didn't expect that the leader of the Hayuga clan would be so strong. Under the defense of eight trigrams palms revolving heaven, they didn't even have a chance to fight back. After making so many preparations, not only did he not get Hayuga Hiyashi's head, but he became the prey of Konoha Anbu. 
Hoshigaki Kisame was sitting on the grass. He took out the pills from his ninja tool bag and drank them with cold water. The feeling of his companion's corpse seemed to still be on his hands. Hoshigaki Kisame knew very well that the several missed shinobi ninjas who acted with him were not very strong. If he took a few people with him, it would be difficult to escape from Konoha Anbu's pursuit. Once the people involved in the operation were caught by Konoha, Miss Shinobi's plan would be at risk of being exposed, so in order to prevent the operation from affecting the village, he chose to kill the few companions who acted together. Only dead people wouldn't reveal secrets. Kisame-sama, how can I become a janin as powerful as you? If I can become a janin, my wife and children will definitely be proud of me. There are still memories of the past few days in his mind, it was his first the first time I met that guy was a 23-year-old chunin. A talented ninja will be like an all in a bag, showing its edge early. If you are still a chunin at the age of 23, your ninja talents will stop there, and you can only be a chunin in this life. When I get Hiyashi's head, I will nominate it to Mr. Subu Yamaguki, and then you will have the opportunity to become Kurigaku's special janin. Hoshigaki Kisame did not break the chunin's fantasy, but comforted him in a normal way. Originally, that guy still had a chance to be promoted to special janin based on his military exploits, but after the mission failed, everything was shattered, and Hoshigaki Kisame had to kill those guys who knew the mission content. What a bunch of naive guys. Hoshigaki Kisame felt quite heavy. Although it was not the first time he had done this, he would feel extremely disgusted every time he killed those compatriots. The guy still had an expression of disbelief on his face until he died. He was even asking himself why he did this and why he treated his companions in the same village like this. It's really stupid. As a ninja, don't you know that your mission is more important than your companions? After sitting quietly on the top of the mountain all night, Hoshigaki Kisame only left when the sun rose. He knew that once this mission failed, there would be no second chance. Since the mission failed, let's go back and try again. Hoshigaki Kisame is still a little lucky. Fortunately, he did not drag Kazuma Kobayakawa into action, otherwise, he would have killed Kazuma Kobayakawa himself. Kazuma Kobayakawa has three wives and several children waiting at home. Kama. After Kazuma Kobayakawa saw Hayuga-chan, Hayuga Hiyashi arranged a nanny for Hayuga-chan. While taking care of Hayuga-chan, he could also monitor Hayuga-chan's every move. Kazuma Kobayakawa continued his busy days. These days, he went to Uchiha Fugaku's house less and less frequently. Every time he went to the Uchiha clan's clan, he always went straight to Uchiha Akatsuki's house. The pregnancy was good this time. After more than a month of hard work, Kobayakawa Kazuma's system finally sent a message that Uchiha Akatsuki was successfully conceived. The B-plus level beauty has brought Kazuma Kobayakawa an increase of 0.8 calories in chakra limit. Now Kazuma Kobayakawa has 8.1 calories of chakra. The amount of chakra alone is already very large, enough to compete with the level of Konoha Sanin, of ninjas. Moreover, his ninja qualification has also increased from the original B1340 to B2140 and he is not far away from the B-plus ninja qualification. According to Kobayakawa Kazuma's speculation, once the ninja qualification reaches a level, he should be able to learn S-level ninjutsu. If he learns a few more S-level ninjutsu, and with the help of the blood succession limit, even in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation Yagura, it's not a big problem either. As for the more difficult Uchiha Obito, there may be ways to fight against him. After Uchiha Akatsuki became pregnant, Kazuma Kobayakawa's visits to the Uchiha tribe's land dropped again. After all, pregnant women had to take care of their babies and not do too much exercise. The fewer visits to the Uchiha tribe, naturally means that the number of encounters with Shisui and Itachi has begun to decrease, and Kobayakawa Kazuma is no longer so easily hostile to the two. Using this period of time, Kazuma Kobayakawa is still working hard to practice ninjutsu, and his fire style head has reached 8% completion. At this stage, it is easier to release the ninjutsu, and there is no need to waste too much chakra. Kobayakawa Kazuma, my mother is pregnant. The midday sun was scorching hot, and as soon as he left the Uchiha tribe's land, Kobayakawa Kazuma met the returning Uchiha Shisui. The child is mine. Kazuma Kobayakawa did not shy away, but directly told the truth. Uchiha Shisui was slightly startled. 
he subconsciously put his hand on the ninja sword behind his back. After hesitating for a moment, he let go. Although it is hard to accept the fact, it seems that I haven't seen a mother like that for a long time. Happy and cheerful, even going out more often, always with a gentle smile on his face. Moreover, Uchiha Shisui also had some expectations. Will his younger siblings be as cute as Itachi's younger brother? If I find you cheating on her, I won't let you go. Uchiha Shisui said harsh words and passed by Kazuma Kobayakawa. Kazuma Kobayakawa ignored Uchiha Shisui. He returned to the embassy to process today's documents, sent a message to Kurigakur, and then rested. The next day, while having breakfast, a female ninja suddenly appeared in front of the dinner table and dictated. Sir, what you are concerned about was that Uchiha Shisui and Danzo had a conflict after meeting. There seemed to be some struggle between the two, and Uchiha Shisui fled after the struggle. Kazuma Kobayakawa put down the bowls, chopsticks and unfinished meal, took the janin utensils and left the yard immediately. After two years of squatting in Konoha, I finally reached this point in time. Uchiha Shisui can die, but Shisui's Mangekyo needs to be recovered. This level of Mangekyo Sharingan already has the ability to change a battle, and if used properly, can even easily resolve the war within Kurigakur. Shadow Clone Technique After asking about the direction of Shisui's escape, Kobayakawa Kazuma followed Shisui's escape all the way. Shadow Clone took the lead, and he kept a certain distance from Shadow Clone and hid in the dark. All the way out of Konoha village, Kazuma Kobayakawa used Shadow Clone to search for traces of Uchiha Shisui. Every Shadow Clone rolled their eyes, which greatly increased his search range. Found it. Suddenly, a piece of information appeared in his mind, and a Shadow Clone saw the figure of Uchiha Shisui. Kazuma Kobayakawa immediately changed direction and ran in the direction of Uchiha Shisui. The sight of his Byakugan made his vision wider and wider. Even in the dense forest, he could easily find all objects with chakra. Moreover, as the Shadow Clone spell is lifted and chakra returns to his true form, his Byakugan range becomes wider. Are those two people Donzo's men? In the distance, two unstable chakra fires appeared in front of Kazuma Kobayakawa, which were obviously signs of injuries to the ninja. With the positions of these two people as anchor points, Kobayakawa Kazuma was more sure that Uchiha Shisui was not far away from him, so he chased forward faster. After running for about half an hour, Kazuma Kobayakawa finally saw the figure of Uchiha Shisui in front of his sight. He thought for a moment and used the shadow clone technique again. Uchiha Shisui is very emotionally unstable now. If he goes directly, there is a risk of being killed. It is better to let Shadow Clone explore the way first. Shadow Clone sped up, while Kazuma Kobayakawa stopped. With the observation power of Byakugan, he was able to notice Uchiha Shisui's every move. It didn't take long for Shadow Clone to catch up with Uchiha Shisui in the jungle. Although he was on the run, Uchiha Shisui did not flee in a panic. There was one more thing he wanted to do before he died. Peace, I hope someone will inherit my legacy. I can die, but the village cannot have a civil war. Such a civil war will kill many people. Strengthening his belief, Uchiha Shisui fled all the way. He noticed movement behind him, turned his gaze and saw Kazuma Kobayakawa chasing him. Why did that guy show up at this critical moment? Uchiha Shisui stopped and stood on the thick tree trunk. His only remaining eye stared at the Shadow Clone, but he did not take action immediately. When the Shadow Clone stopped in front of him, Uchiha Shisui said, Can you please go back? I don't want to make my mother sad, and I don't want my upcoming brothers and sisters to lose their father like me. After saying that, Uchiha Shisui's pupils turned, and a unique four-corner pattern appeared in the pupils, and a green shadow appeared around his body. Suzano Kobayakawa Kazuma Shadow Clone naturally recognized this powerful ninjutsu immediately. This ninjutsu was called Absolute Defense by Sasuke, and it was a powerful ninjutsu integrating offense and defense. It can be said that as long as Suzano is activated, its strength can be considered to have reached cage level. If something like this happened, why don't you take back your other Sharingan? With your strength, it should be an easy task to take back the Sharingan. Shadow Clone asked. Seeing how sensitive Shisui is, Shadow Clone already knows that there is no possibility of getting Mangekyo easily. Because of peace, guys like you don't understand, 
the will of fire that we Konoha Shinobi have, the treasures we guard. Uchiha Shisui didn't talk nonsense. Suzano suddenly stretched out and hit Shadow Clone with one arm, a big tree was destroyed in an instant. Upon seeing this, the Shadow Clone hurriedly fled into the distance, disappearing from Uchiha Shisui's sight. Great, no need to kill him. Seeing Kazuma Kobayakawa fleeing far away, Uchiha Shisui mistakenly thought that Kazuma Kobayakawa had left. Since Mangekio Sharingan cannot observe the position of Kazuma Kobayakawa, it means that it is difficult for Kazuma Kobayakawa to find himself. At least, my mother has someone to trust me with, and my unborn brother also has a father. It seems that there is nothing worth remembering. What Uchiha Shisui doesn't know is that the real Kazuma Kobayakawa is still following him in the distance with his Bayakugan, and keeping a certain distance from him. In a blink of an eye, it was night time. In front of a waterfall, Uchiha Shisui met Uchiha Itachi who had just completed his mission. The coup of the Uchiha clan cannot be stopped. If a civil war breaks out like this, other countries will definitely take the opportunity to invade, and war will definitely break out. I wanted to use distinguished heavenly gods to stop the coup, but unexpectedly Danzo took away my right eye. He never trusted me. That guy wants to protect the peace of Konoha in his own way. Uchiha Itachi was slightly startled. His former friend was killed by Danzo. He did not show any special mood swings, nor did he have any thoughts of revenge. Is there no other way? Uchiha Itachi asked. I entrust this answer to you along with my left eye. You must protect the piece of Konoha for me. Uchiha Shisui stretched his finger to the left eye and dug it out. Uchiha Itachi held the bloody eyes in his hands and was speechless for a moment. Well, that's it for me. After doing this, Uchiha Shisui showed a hearty smile and jumped off the cliff. I will not let anyone take away the piece of Konoha. Two streaks of blood flowed from Uchiha Itachi's eyes. He suddenly opened his eyes. Deep in his pupils, the shape of Sharingan had changed. Suddenly, Uchiha Itachi's expression changed. He only had time to turn his head and saw a kunai fly past his eyes, scratching his face and drawing a shallow line of blood. Danzo, Uchiha Itachi turned back, huge emotional fluctuations causing dark flames to burst out from the depths of his eyes. The Danzo in front of him was ignited, and immediately, a cloud of mist burst out. Its shadow clone, where is the original body? Before he had time to think too much, Uchiha Itachi's vision began to blur. That Kanai is poisonous. I am no match for you in a head-to-head -head confrontation, but you are still overconfident in the power of the eyes of the Uchiha clan. Kobayakawa Kazuma took away Uchiha Shisui's left eye and put it into the culture medium that had been prepared. After thinking about it for a moment, Kobayakawa Kazuma did not kill Uchiha Itachi here. Killing the other party here would only bring trouble to himself. The death of an Uchiha Shisui is a big deal, but if another Uchiha Itachi dies, then the Uchiha clan will probably continue to die. Who knows if the flames of war will burn him. As one of the beneficiaries of this matter, it is better to keep a low profile. Kobayakawa Kazuma was not interested in Konoha's affairs. He just took what he needed. Sharingan requires a pair to exert its due power. The sky was gradually getting brighter, and the chirping of birds and the chirping of cicadas were mixed together. Uchiha Itachi slowly opened his eyes, and the memory in his mind was still stuck on last night. Shisui, Uchiha Itachi returned to the edge of the cliff and shouted to the bottom of the cliff. Immediately, he lay slumped on the ground, knowing that Shisui was dead, and the eyes that Shisui entrusted to him were taken away by Danzo. That person is not Danzo. Soon, Uchiha Itachi found some traces from what happened last night. If Danzo comes to seize Sharingan, there is no need to show up in person. His appearance may intensify the conflict between the Uchiha clan and Konoha. But besides Danzo, who else knows Shisui's Sharingan well? After putting away the Sharingan, Kobayakawa Kazuma still pretended that nothing happened. Next, he only needed to find a summoning beast that could adapt to the Sharingan. This Sharingan will become a key node in changing the situation of the battle. Kobayakawa Kazuma also fell into a temporary vacuum period. He planned to stay for two weeks to recuperate before getting Hyuga Chan pregnant. According to the urine nature of the system, the reward given to the same Kunoichi when she gets pregnant for the second time will be lower than the first time. However, Hyuga-chan's blood inheritance limit is very good. 
I don't know if she will have a Byakugan if she gives birth to a child with Byakugan. What a change. The death of Uchiha Shisui also soon fermented within the Uchiha clan. Although the top management of Konoha and the Uchiha clan intentionally blocked the news, how could the disappearance of a genius not attract the attention of interested people? Lord Kobayakawa, Uchiha Fugaku asked to see you, saying that he has something to discuss with you. While the embassy was processing documents, a female ninja knelt on the ground and conveyed a message to Kazuma Kobayakawa. I know, I will make time to see him. Kobayakawa Kazuma frowned. Originally, he did not plan to go to the Uchiha clan's clan in the past few days. Shisui died and Konoha and Uchiha were wary of each other. This period will be a sensitive period. However, although it is a sensitive period, it is also the best time to convince the Uchiha clan. At night, Kazuma Kobayakawa put on a mask and quietly sneaked into the Uchiha clan's territory. On the way to the Uchiha clan, Kazuma Kobayakawa met five Anbu. Thanks to the help of Bayakugan, he was able to easily avoid these Anbu and finally sneaked into the target location. Uchiha Fugaku's home naturally became the focus of Anbu's tracking. Kobayakawa Kazuma finally sneaked into the yard and knocked on Uchiha Fugaku's door. Mr. Fugaku Kazuma Kobayakawa greeted softly. Uchiha Fugaku opened the door, exposed a crack in the door, and welcomed Kazuma Kobayakawa in. The room was dark, and Uchiha Fugaku's face could only be vaguely seen through the moonlight through the window. Shisui is dead. Itachi has activated Mangekio Sharingan. Once he masters the use of Mangekio Sharingan, he will definitely become a genius not inferior to Shisui in a few years. Uchiha Fugaku sat cross-legged on the ground and affirmed. Uchiha Shisui is the genius of the Uchiha clan. His death greatly reduced the strength of the Uchiha clan. But fortunately, Uchiha Itachi has opened the Mangekio Sharingan. Fugaku believes that Itachi will definitely make up for this fighting power. With the existence of Uchiha Itachi, the Uchiha clan still has the qualifications to challenge Konoha village. You didn't call me here just to show off to me that your son has activated the Mangekio Sharingan, right? Kazuma Kobayakawa asked coldly. Uchiha Fugaku shook his head, you said that if one day I feel that I can't support it anymore, I can entrust my wife and children to you. Itachi is already old and has his own ideas, but Sasuke is still very young. I hope you can take him with Makoto. Kobayakawa Kazuma couldn't help but smile and asked. As the leader of the Uchiha clan, you take the lead in sending away your wife and children. Aren't you afraid of arousing suspicion in the village and causing dissatisfaction among the Uchiha clan? Afraid. A look of solemnity appeared on Uchiha Fugaku's face. He firmed up his thoughts and explained, but now is the best time. Shisui's death can block Konoha's mouth. As for my people, I believe they will understand. A week later, still at night, my people will send them away from the position behind Hokage Rock. Kobayakawa Kazuma didn't say much nonsense. After the conversation, he left Uchiha Fugaku's home. It seems that Fugaku is not a guy who doesn't know how to adapt. The death of Uchiha Shisui at least gave him the idea of preserving his wife and children. Taking advantage of the darkness, Kobayakawa Kazuma sneaked back to the embassy. He called the female ninja who usually delivered news, and under the bright light, asked, Tomoko, how long have you been in Konoha on a mission? Tomoko lowered his head, Kaido, it has been ten years now. When I came, it was still when the third Mizukage was in power. I heard that you were an orphan. Is there anyone else you care about? Kobayakawa Kazuma asked again. Tomoko seemed to feel something in her heart. She raised her head, with a rebellious look in her eyes. I hope to kill Yugura and recreate Kurigakur when the third Mizukage was in power. Tomoko is an orphan rescued from the battlefield by the third Mizukage Kido Eiji. She has deep feelings for the Kido clan. After the incident of Yugura purging the blood successor family broke out, the Kido clan was naturally the first family to be persecuted. I will fulfill your wish. Now there is a task that you need to complete. Lord Third Mizukage's wish is tonight. Kazuma Kobayakawa gave her the task of escorting Uchiha Makoto out of Konoha. Although Tomoko is only a chunin, it is indeed difficult to find a better candidate than her in Konoha. After all, as the ambassador, Kobayakawa Kazuma must not be able to give it away personally. Once he gets involved, it will be a conflict between Kurigakur and Konoha. After explaining, 
Kazuma Kobayakawa added. It would be best if the mission can be successfully completed, but once the matter is exposed, your identity must be kept secret. Tomoko didn't answer immediately. She just took out a kanai from her ninja tool bag and scratched a deep scar on her face. For Kurigakur, I know what to do. Go, Kobayakawa Kazuma sighed. Tomoko's beauty could barely reach sea level, but now that she has ruined her appearance, she will probably be downgraded to E. However, the world of ninjas is cruel, just like Hoshigaki Kisame chose to kill his companions after failing the mission. In order to avoid suspicion, Kobayakawa Kazuma did not visit the Uchiha clan again in the next week. Just the day before the mission, he made an appointment with Yuhi Kurunai to sightsee around Konoha. Kobayakawa Kazuma, today is the day to pay homage to our friend, you can come too. When walking to Hokage's office, Yuhi Kurunai suddenly suggested. Only then did Kazuma Kobayakawa know that Yuhi Kurunai had made an appointment with Kakashi and the others, so he agreed. I also want to meet the ninjas who defend Konoha village. Kazuma Kobayakawa left with Yuhi Kurunai and the others. Hitaki Kakashi seemed to still dislike Kazuma Kobayakawa. He glanced at Kazuma Kobayakawa coldly and suddenly asked. Kobayakawa Kazuma, does Orochimaru's defection have something to do with you? Orochimaru, are you a Sanin from Konoha? Kobayakawa Kazuma smiled and asked. Hey, seeing Kazuma Kobayakawa pretending to be stupid, Kakashi had no choice but to shut his mouth and stopped asking. Orochimaru's defection was due to the discovery of the human experimentation plan, and it probably had nothing to do with Kazuma Kobayakawa. Soon, the group of people arrived not far from the cemetery. Kakashi and the other three entered the flower shop to choose flowers. Kobayakawa Kazuma entered the cemetery first. The grass was a little withered and yellow, and tombstones with names written on them were neatly arranged. Kobayakawa Kazuma vaguely saw a figure wearing black clothes. At first, he didn't care. However, the figure suddenly disappeared. Then, Kazuma Kobayakawa felt something appear behind him. With instinctive intuition, Kobayakawa Kazuma immediately escaped with technique. He turned around and saw a guy wearing a white Uzumaki mask standing there. With his eyes as the center, the spaces were layered and formed into a circle of distortion. Kobayakawa Kazuma's face darkened, and when he looked at the familiar Sharingan, his mind suddenly sank. Uchiha Obito, why is this guy here? Shouldn't he stay in the blood mist and control Yagura? You guys saw me. Uchiha Obito's voice was very low and scary. Kobayakawa Kazuma hurriedly pretended not to know each other and said, I have some friendship with your clan leader Uchiha Fugaku. Since you are from the Uchiha clan, we are friends. HMPH, do you think that mentioning Fugaku will make me spare your life? Uchiha Obito was unmoved. His right eye distorted the space and sucked his body into a different space. Kobayakawa Kazuma knew Obito's information and also knew that this guy hadn't left yet. Now it seemed that he couldn't escape without any means. If it doesn't work, I might as well fight here. Cho, Shu, Chen, Z, Shu, Hai, C, Yin, Shadow Clone Technique. Kazuma Kobayakawa immediately separated eight shadow clone, and then, the eight shadow clone performed the mist shinobi technique together, turning the entire cemetery into a world of dense fog. In the thick fog, eight shadow clones dispersed in a crowd. The real Kazuma Kobayakawa mixed in the shadow clones and fled out of the cemetery. Not long after, Kazuma Kobayakawa received the news that the shadow clone was defeated. Two shadow clone were attacked and were forced to disarm. Hitaki Kakashi, what are you doing in our cemetery in Konoha? Suddenly, Hitaki Kakashi's voice broke into the thick fog. Immediately, Serutobi Asuma performed ninjutsu. A strong wind blew by Kazuma, blowing away the fog in the cemetery. In the fog, only Kazuma Kobayakawa and six shadow clones were left. It was obvious that Uchiha Obito was gone by the time Kakashi and Asuma showed up. Kazuma Kobayakawa couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief, but he didn't expect that he was actually saved by Hitaki Kakashi. He was already trying his best to avoid meeting Obito, but he didn't expect that it would be such a coincidence. I was attacked just now. Kazuma Kobayakawa put the kanai in his hand into his ninja bag and said lightly. What lies are you talking about? How could there be anyone else here besides you? Kakashi grabbed Kazuma Kobayakawa's collar. Naturally, he would not believe Kazuma Kobayakawa's words. In his opinion, 
Kazuma Kobayakawa simply wanted to to destroy the place where their souls rest. Kakashi, Kobayakawa didn't lie, someone really came here. Sarutobi Asuma on the side said, he lowered his head, stroked a piece of trampled grass under his feet, and said solemnly, these footprints are still fresh, but they are not those of any of us. For one person. Really, is there someone? Hitaki Kakashi then let go of his hand and stopped embarrassing Kobayakawa Kazuma. Kobayakawa Kazuma did not pursue this matter, but Obito's existence reminded him. Uchiha Obito's space ninjutsu is almost unbreakable. How can we break that ninjutsu? He immediately thought of stealing Kakashi's Sharingan, but after a second thought, he gave up the idea. Obito obviously has the ability to retrieve another Sharingan at any time, but he didn't retrieve it. Isn't it because this eye was on his former best friend? But if he takes away Kakashi's Sharingan, Obito can take it back without restraint. Uchiha Obito, a double Mangekyo, has no way to deal with it. As dusk approached, Kazuma Kobayakawa made an excuse to go to Yuhi Bene's house and had dinner at Yuhi Bene's house. After several years of getting along, he and Yuhi Hong's relationship has become quite good. At dusk, Kakashi also reported to Anbu and continued his mission. Because of Uchiha Shisui's death, the Uchiha clan has been ready to take action, so Anbu has been particularly busy recently. With the order of the third Hokage, Konoha banned the Uchiha clan's right to enter and leave the village at will. Today, Konoha village only allows Uchiha who go out to come back, but does not allow Uchiha inside to leave. Although Hitaki Kakashi is a little worried about the situation of the Uchiha clan, he thinks that this situation will not last long. Uchiha will eventually reconcile with the village. Leaving the village so late, the alert ninja's ordinary greeting caught Kakashi's attention. He vaguely felt that the two women in front of him were very familiar, and it seemed as if he had seen them before somewhere. Kakashi did not give up his intuition. He pulled off his mask and further confirmed this abnormality with the help of three Tomo Sharingan's observation. It's Uchiha, and she seems to be the patriarch's wife of the Uchiha clan. You are not allowed to leave, Kakashi said calmly. The relationship between the village and the Uchiha clan was already very tense. At this juncture, the Uchiha clan not only did not think about how to ease the relationship with the village, but the patriarch's wife actually wanted to flee. The Uchiha clan, do you want to defect to Konoha? Hearing Kakashi's voice, Tomoko immediately threw her kunai, and the alert ninja closest to her barely managed to avoid the vital point and shouted at the top of her lungs. Enemy attack, Tomoko took Uchiha Makoto and fled quickly. She knew very well that Anbu from Konoha would arrive in just two or three minutes, and after that, she would never be able to escape again. Hitaki Kakashi hurriedly chased after him. He knew very well that as long as he was delayed for five minutes at most, the rest of the Anbu would come to support, and that would be the end of the matter. Tomoko and Makoto are running away from the front, and Hitaki Kakashi is following closely from behind. Suddenly, several kanai and shurikens flew out of the bushes. Kakashi paused briefly and escaped the attack. Then, two ninjas emerged from the bushes, holding kanai in their hands, and attacked Kakashi. These two people were naturally arranged by Kazuma Kobayakawa. They were mercenaries hired with money, and they themselves did not know Kazuma Kobayakawa's identity. Bang! Kakashi condensed a chidori in his hand, and the thunder and lightning flashed like the song of birds. He quickly rushed towards the mercenaries, and penetrated the bodies of the two mercenaries with just one blow. The two mercenaries fell under Chidori's attack. Hitaki Kakashi looked forward. Tomoko had already rushed towards him, the kunai in his hand flashing with cold light. Hitaki Kakashi pulled out the hand that penetrated the enemy's body and spread a large amount of bloodline all over the floor. He took out the kunai from his ninja bag and quickly swung it, knocking the kunai out of Tomoko's hand. Immediately, kunai swung again, cutting a deep and long gash in Tomoko's arm. A large amount of blood was spilled, Tomoko couldn't help but step back, her expression turned slightly cold. The arm is useless. In the confrontation just now, the tendons of her arm were severed by Kakashi, and she had lost the ability to move. For a ninja, having an arm disabled is definitely a big deal. Without an arm, it means that you cannot form seals and most ninjutsu cannot be performed. What's more, the person Tomoko faced was the son of Konoha's white fang ya, the genius Jonin Hataki Kakashi. 
Kakashi didn't take Tomoko seriously at all. Although the blow just now failed to kill Tomoko, it had already destroyed Tomoko's fighting ability. He chased Uchiha Makoto again. For Kakashi, the really difficult person was actually Uchiha Makoto. This woman was a Jonin many years ago. Even though she has not been a ninja for many years, the Sharingan of the Uchiha clan is no joke. However, what Kakashi didn't expect was. In just a moment, Tomoko, whose arm was crippled, caught up from behind and stabbed Kakashi with a kunai. Kakashi easily predicted Tomoko's movements. In front of the three Tomo Sharingan, Tomo's physical attacks were as ridiculous as a baby taking steps. Kakashi waved the kunai in his hand again, leaving a line of blood on Tomoko's neck. With just one move, he cut Tomoko's artery. Tomoko felt a chill on her neck, and immediately, the suffocation in her brain spread throughout her body. She gritted her teeth so hard that all the teeth in her mouth broke. Immediately, the kunai in her hand pierced Kakashi's shoulder, and she took the opportunity to hug Kakashi's body. That master's ambition is tonight. How can we, let a guy like you destroy what we have fought so hard to protect? You, just go to hell with me. Tomoko rushed towards him with Kakashi. Towards the ground, she exhausted the last strength of her life. Kakashi's expression changed. The clothes on this woman's body were actually covered with detonating charms. At a rough glance, there were dozens of them. In terms of strength, he far surpassed Tomoko as a chunin, but he underestimated Tomoko's determination. This woman, in order to realize the third Mizukage's wish, could die without a trace. Rumble. The flames of the explosion brought up large amounts of smoke and dust. Kakashi was overturned by the aftermath of the explosion. After he rolled some distance away, he felt that all the bones in his body were broken. Kakashi only had time to take one last look at Uchiha Makoto's figure before he passed out. Five minutes later, Anbu's people arrived, but except for a few corpses and the unconscious Kakashi, Uchiha Makoto was nowhere to be found. Uchiha Makoto followed the route Tomoko told her and headed to the next village as quickly as possible, where she was picked up by someone and arranged to leave the land of fire. Three days later, the comatose Hataki Kakashi woke up in the hospital. The midday sun shone into the ward, making the ward very warm. Looking outside, the tree outside the ward window had lost a lot of leaves and became a little bare. It was already late autumn in the blink of an eye. Sarutobi Asuma was sitting aside. Seeing that Kakashi woke up, he breathed a sigh of relief, then poured a cup of hot water and put it next to Kakashi's hand. Seeing that Kakashi was in a daze, Serutobi Asuma didn't speak. More than ten minutes later, third Hokage Serutobi Hirazan came after hearing the news. He was wearing a bloated Hokage robe and a Hokage hat, and he didn't even change his clothes. The person following Serutobi Hirazan was Danzo, his face was gloomy and seemed to be full of anger. This small ward was suddenly filled with high-level officials from Konoha. Kakashi, what happened that night? With your strength, couldn't you stop the people who escaped from the village? Serutobi Hirazan asked coldly. Now that Kakashi wakes up, the most important thing is to find out who escaped that night. Who is the person? In this way, remedial measures can be taken in a timely manner. Serutobi Hirazan is very aware of Kakashi's strength. Even in today's Konoha, Kakashi's strength is quite outstanding. It is not easy for those people to make Kakashi like this. That person used transformation technique. I couldn't see through her appearance with Sharingan, but I had a very familiar feeling. Kakashi sat on the bed, having just woken up from a coma, his consciousness was still a little hazy. Is it Uchiha? Danzo couldn't wait to say it, Serutobi Hirazan couldn't ask the question directly, here he comes. Watch your words, Danzo. Don't doubt your fellow villagers. Serutobi Hirazan glanced at Danzo, but he also had doubts about this matter. It's just that, as a Hokage, he can't speak without fear like Danzo. You think so too, Hirazan. Danzo ignored the atmosphere and said to himself, You can also feel it, Uchiha is already ready to make a move. What their clan wants is not just power, but the position of Hokage. Shut up. Serutobi Hirazan stopped Danzo and looked at Kakashi, waiting for Kakashi's answer. Although Danzo was dissatisfied with Serutobi Hirazan, he still kept his mouth shut like an angry little daughter-in-law. Kakashi frowned. 
He knew very well that once he expressed his suspicion, it would worsen the relationship between the village and the Uchiha clan. After all, there are relatives of his close friend Obito in that clan, and he doesn't want to see Uchiha fall out with the village. Ah, if I guess correctly, the person who escaped is the wife of the Uchiha clan leader, Uchiha Makoto. After thinking for a moment, Kakashi finally spoke. There is no need to hide it. As long as the village does a little investigation, it will soon be discovered that Uchiha Makoto escaped. That's true, evil Uchiha. After hearing the answer, Danzo punched the door of the ward hard, showing no trace of his hatred for Uchiha. You can't make a conclusion based on Kakashi's few words. Let Uchiha Fugaku confront you. Serutobi Hirazan said coldly. He walked outside the ward, gave an order to an Anbu ninja and then came back. Serutobi Hirazan waited until the afternoon in the hospital. In the end, he and Danzo did not wait until Uchiha Fugaku showed up, but only waited for a word conveyed by Fugaku. Makoto has stopped being a ninja a long time ago. I don't want her to have the same ending as Uchiha Shisui. Her departure is the decision of me, the clan leader. Because of Uchiha Fugaku's toughness, a few days later, the defense against the Uchiha clan was once again strengthened. If any ninja from the Uchiha clan wants to take on a mission, there must be at least one ninja sent by the village to guard him in the three-person team. Uchiha Makoto's escape had a huge impact on both the top management of Konoha and the Uchiha clan. However, this matter, like the matter of Uchiha Shisui, was quickly suppressed by those who were interested. After Kobayakawa Kazuma handed over Makoto's matter to Tomoko, he never interfered again. He had arranged everything. As for whether Makoto could escape smoothly, it depends on which side is stronger, Konoha or Mist Shinobi. Recently, Kobayakawa Kazuma originally planned to visit Uchiha Akatsuki more. This woman lost her husband and then her son, so she must have felt uncomfortable thinking about it. Unfortunately, the Uchiha clan was blocked by the village, which made it difficult for Kazuma Kobayakawa to enter the Uchiha clan's land, so he never went back. In order to make up for his debt to Uchiha, Kazuma Kobayakawa had to go to Hayuga chans house to kill time. Seeing that Hayuga chan had been recuperating for several months after giving birth and her body was almost recovered, Kobayakawa Kazuma started system activities again. Hayuga chans eye roll is very cute. This time the baby making activity did not go very smoothly. It took a month and a half before Hayuga chan was pregnant with the child, and Kazuma Kobayakawa naturally received a reward from the system. Name Kazuma Kobayakawa Lifespan 47 years Chakra 8.5 calories. Ninja qualification. B. 5 8 Blood succession limit. Crystal style, Byakugan. Ninjutsu. Body replacement technique, 52% completion. Transformation technique, 52% completion. Clone technique, 52% completion. Water style. Mist Shinobi technique, 43% completion. Water style. Shui Luan Bow, completeness 42%, Sword Technique Moon Shadow, completion 41%, Water Style Water Cannon, completion 19%, Summoning Technique, completion 100%, Truth Technique, completion 7%, Fire Style. Dragon Fire Technique, 11% completion, Shadow Clone Technique, 8% completion, Fire Style. Head Hard, 6% completion. As expected, the successful sewing this time only increased the amount of chakra by 0.4 calories and a small amount of ninja qualifications, making the same woman pregnant. The price performance ratio is still too low. However, Kobayakawa Kazuma was also very open minded. Let Hayuga chan give birth to a child this time not for the reward of sowing seeds, but mainly for the blood of the Hayuga clan. If this child can inherit the blood limit of the Bayakugan, maybe what will happen to the Bayakugan? During this period, Kazuma Kobayakawa has been collecting information about Danzo in order to find opportunities for Danzo to go out alone. The other eye of Uchiha Shisui is still in Danzo's hand. Kazuma Kobayakawa really wants to get that eye. By the time both eyes are together, it's almost time to return to Kurigakur. Lord Kobayakawa, Danzo has come to the embassy. Did Konoha find something? A chunin fell from the roof and knelt on one knee in front of Kobayakawa Kazuma. When reporting the situation, he asked himself casually, conjecture. Since Tomoko left, Chunin Dezo has taken over Tomoko's tasks and reported to Kobayakawa Kazuma on a daily basis. I believe Tomoko, 
she is determined to defend intelligence with her life. Kobayakawa Kazuma changed into Jonin's suit, and then waited for Danzo in the living room. If Konoha did find out what he had done, the person coming would not be just Danzo. After a while, Danzo appeared and swaggered into the living room with a ninja sword on his back, and two people followed him. Seeing the person behind Danzo, Kobayakawa Kazuma was slightly startled, but then he controlled the change in his expression very well. According to common sense, it was his first time seeing Tsunade, so he shouldn't show any emotions such as surprise. Why did Danzo-sama come to my place? Kobayakawa Kazuma asked Danzo and the other three to kneel down in front of the small table. He prepared tea and snacks for the three of them, and then started to speak. Someone from the Uchiha clan defected to Konoha. Do you, the Mist Shinobi people, want to make enemies of Konoha by helping Uchiha? Danzo slammed his palms on the table, spilling tea, and looked at Kobayakawa Kazuma with murderous intent. Why would Danzo-sama think so? Although our Mist Shinobi had a little friction with Konoha during the Third War, in general, our two villages are still very friendly. The defection of the Uchiha clan is your Konoha's business, and my Kobayakawa's what does Kazuma have to do with it? Kobayakawa Kazuma chose to play dumb. Since Danzo is willing to sit here and talk, there must be no evidence. Otherwise, with Danzo's character, even if Serutobi Hiruzen is in the way, he might be able to attack this Jonin. HMPH. Among all the ninja villages stationed in Konoha, you missed Shinobi and Uchiha are the closest. Who doesn't know that you missed Shinobi has been thinking about Uchiha's Sharingan for a long time? Danzo did not continue to ask, but just stated the facts. He knew very well that Uchiha Makoto's escape must be related to Kobayakawa Kazuma, otherwise, Uchiha Makoto would never have escaped from Konoha alive. So what if Uchiha Makoto is Jonin? There are quite a few Jonin in Konoha. But the key problem is that Danzo has no evidence at all. Kazuma Kobayakawa did it very cleanly. The three people killed by Kakashi left no trace at all. The Kunoichi even used the detonating talisman to blow the corpse into pieces. Kazuma Kobayakawa didn't care what Danzo was talking about at all, but deliberately deviated from the topic and said nonsense. I heard that the genius of the Uchiha clan, Shisui, died in the hands of Lord Danzo. It can be seen that you were ruthless. Uchiha Fugaku is afraid it makes sense for you to take action against his wife. Faced with Kazuma Kobayakawa's accusation, Danzo's face darkened. Kazuma Kobayakawa was right, and Shisui died in his hands. However, the nature of this matter is the same as that of Makoto's defection. Many people can guess the truth of the matter, but when faced with the real culprit, they cannot produce enough evidence, so they can only let the real culprit go free. However, Danzo knew very well that now was not the time to argue with Kazuma Kobayakawa. He came here today for a more important matter. During the conversation, Danzo inadvertently tapped the table with his index finger, and then the male ninja behind Danzo rushed out. You idiot of Mist Shinobi, how dare you slander Lord Danzo like this? He used the teleportation technique to approach Kobayakawa Kazuma immediately. Judging from his skillful movements and reactions, he was obviously well prepared. Immediately, the male ninja took action and stabbed Kobayakawa Kazuma with the kunai in his hand. At the same time, the two Mist Shinobi ninjas hiding in the living room also used the teleportation technique to arrive at the scene. The moment the male ninja was stabbed by the kunai, several kunai had already arrived in front of the male ninja. Kobayakawa Kazuma used the teleportation technique to avoid the attack of the male ninja, and casually snatched the kunai from the opponent's hand. The physical skills of this chunin level ninja were simply not good enough, and it was just like playing house. Immediately, Kobayakawa Kazuma stabbed the kunai towards the chest of the male ninja. Since the opponent was the first to strike, even if he killed the opponent, it could be said to be excessive defense. When, Kobayakawa Kazuma felt the tiger's mouth go numb for a moment, and then the direction of the kunai deflected, and it actually bounced away. To the right of Kobayakawa Kazuma's sight, the porcelain cup on Tsunade's table had disappeared. After the porcelain cup collided with the kunai, it scattered on the floor. Do you miss Shinobi want to kill people in my grandfather's village? Tsunade asked coldly. She punched the wooden table in front of her, and immediately, the wooden table fell into pieces and flew out. 
Although Tsunade now has a normal relationship with the village and has no values dedicating herself to the village, she still has deep feelings for her grandfather Senju Hashirama, and Kobayakawa Kazuma is naturally regarded as her enemy. As expected of Konoha Sanin, Kazuma Kobayakawa sighed in his heart. After three battles, Tsunade should be considered at its peak in terms of strength. With the hundred healings mark, monster strength, and the huge summoning beast, the hard power far exceeds Donzo's. Putting aside the weakness of bleeding, it is not certain who is stronger between third generation in his old age and Tsunade in his prime. You attacked me on my territory because you Konoha bullied others too much. Kobayakawa Kazuma looked to the left and right. The male ninja from Konoha had been pinned to the ground by Mist Shinobi's people. He clapped his hands, and Mist Shinobi's people took the male ninja away. Although he couldn't kill the other party, it was inevitable to save his life and blackmail Konoha for some money. As for Tsunade, Kazuma Kobayakawa opened the system and took a look at Tsunade's information, and then silently wrote down today's grudge. Name, Tsunade. Age, 41. Beauty, A+. Ninja qualification, A. Blood inheritance limit, none. Although there is no bloodline limit, Tsunade's beauty and ninja qualifications are the best Kazuma Kobayakawa has ever seen, and she is definitely a good candidate to be his wife. If there is a chance in the future, she must have three children. The negotiation continued, and Kazuma Kobayakawa stood on Uchiha's side. When he got emotional, he directly pointed at Donzo's nose and greeted Donzo's mother. Diplomacy is like this. Everyone has their own village of ninja behind them. As long as they don't kill anyone, they can scold them as much as they want and throw away the sword of language at will. Danzo was so angry that he hurriedly exchanged a few words with Kazuma Kobayakawa, then slammed the table and left the scene. Tsunade snorted coldly, and after Danzo left, she also left the embassy. Not far from the Hokage building, Tsunade met Danzo again. Danzo changed his irritable expression and replaced it with a gloomy expression. Did you see it? The shadow clone that went to Orochimaru's laboratory that night was this guy. This guy from Mist Shinobi is a master of swordsmanship. Judging from his movements, I'm 70% sure. Tsunade analyzed casually. Having experienced the Ninja World War, she knew very well how valuable Kobayakawa Kazuma was. This new Mist Shinobi ambassador is far stronger than the previous ambassador Juj Naoya. 70%. That's enough. Donzo's face turned cold. He came to visit Kazuma Kobayakawa today in order to let Tsunade confirm. With Tsunade's 70% theory, even if he secretly killed Kazuma Kobayakawa, Sarutobi Hiruzen could not say anything. On the surface, Konoha really cannot take action against Kazuma Kobayakawa. Once it does, the situation will rise to the level of dispute between the land of fire and the land of water. But privately, as long as he pretends to be someone from another ninja village and kills Kazuma Kobayakawa, Konoha will at most be held responsible for poor management and will have to pay for the ninjutsu. Tsunade doesn't know what Donzo's, enough is enough, means. She hasn't been involved in Konoha village's affairs for many years. She prefers gambling here and there to those political battles. After handling today's affairs and getting a sum of money from Danzo, Tsunade went to the bar to drink. Kazuma Kobayakawa used the detained Chunin as a bargaining chip and extorted 300,000 tails of cash from Konoha in one breath. Although the money was not much, he felt a little comfort at least. As Uchiha Akatsuki and Hayuga chan became pregnant and began to raise their children, Kobayakawa Kazuma once again focused his life on daily affairs and ninjutsu. Water Style the completion rate of water style cannon technique reached 21%, which made Kobayakawa when Yijun launches water bombs, he can raise his hand to fire them instantly, which greatly shortens the enemy's reaction time. Another month has passed, and the first snow since winter has covered the streets of Konoha village, turning the village into white. During this month, the situation in the village and the Uchiha clan seemed to have eased. The number of Anbu following the Uchiha clan dropped sharply. Kobayakawa Kazuma also found time to visit Uchiha Akatsuki. After not seeing each other for more than two months, Uchiha's belly has visibly bulged, giving her a hint of the charm of a mature woman. However, she looked a little haggard and her eyes looked a little red and swollen. It seems that Shisui's death has been a big blow to her. Thinking about it, after Shisui's father passed away, 
Akatsuki could only depend on Shisui, her only son. Now, even her son has died, and the cause of death is related to Konoha. You know, Uchiha Shisui is more than just Anbu from third generation. His feelings for Konoha are deeper than anyone else, his will of fire is even stronger than that of the contemporary Hokage. My condolences, madam. If Shisui was still alive, I would not want to see madam like this. Kazuma Kobayakawa held Uchiha Akatsuki in his arms and comforted her with a few words. The death of Uchiha Shisui was his own choice. Otherwise, with a danzo, there would be absolutely no possibility of killing Uchiha Shisui. With those Mangekyo alone, Uchiha Shisui can easily kill Danzo, and losing an eye to Danzo is ridiculous. Although Kazuma Kobayakawa met Uchiha Shisui before his death, he understood from the moment his shadow clone met Shisui that the fall of this genius was inevitable. Izuma, Shisui clearly desires peace more than anyone else, but why is he still being killed by the village? Uchiha leaned on Kazuma Kobayakawa's shoulder. Her tone was calm, as if she was asking about something unrelated. Urgent matters. The calmer Akatsuki becomes, the more worried Kobayakawa Kazuma becomes. Such a person might do something irrational. I met Shisui the day before he died. He said happily that he was about to have a younger brother and sister. Kazuma Kobayakawa lied casually in order to stabilize Akatsuki first. I know that although Shisui is always cold to you, he only thinks from the perspective of the village. He doesn't hate you. Uchiha hugged Kobayakawa Kazuma hard and her tone became gentler. At this time, Uchiha Akatsuki needs men's care more, and Uchiha Akatsuki's mood will affect the unborn child. Kazuma Kobayakawa also cares about Uchiha Akatsuki. Now that Uchiha Makoto has left Konoha, the matter of obtaining Uchiha's bloodline can only be pinned on Akatsuki for the time being. It was already dark when he left Uchiha Akatsuki's house. Kobayakawa Kazuma couldn't help but shudder. He looked back and saw that there was nothing under the dim street lights. According to common sense, he should visit Uchiha Fugaku, but now, Uchiha Makoto's defection to Konoha has not completely settled, so it is best not to cause this trouble. Walking on the deserted streets of the Uchiha clan, Kobayakawa Kazuma was quite emotional. In his opinion, Shisui and Itachi's vision was really not that good. He is obviously a member of the Uchiha clan, and he obviously sees the Uchiha clan being ostracized by the village, but he still does a series of unbelievable actions for the sake of the will of fire. Maybe people are different. Kobayakawa Kazuma felt that if he was born into such an Uchiha clan, he would definitely have murderous intentions towards Hokage. In fact, the situation experienced by Kazuma Kobayakawa is similar to that of Shisui and others, but he is not as powerful as Shisui and Itachi. The distant relative Turumi's clan was wiped out by the fourth Mizuka Yagura, and he could only hide his identity and wait for opportunities to act. Who is it? As soon as he arrived on the street outside the Uchiha clan, Kazuma Kobayakawa took out a shuriken from his ninja bag, and the shuriken disappeared into the darkness beside the street. Immediately, a ninja jumped to a nearby roof and avoided Kobayakawa Kazuma's shuriken. His face was covered with a mask, making it impossible to recognize his identity. The ninja shot two shurikens just like Kazuma Kobayakawa. Kazuma Kobayakawa drew his ninja sword and slashed with his backhand, and the two shurikens were chopped to the ground. However, as the shuriken fell, his expression turned slightly cold. Something was very wrong. This ninja was too weak. Judging from his reaction speed and ability to fire shurikens, he is an average chunin. When he takes the chunin exam for the first time, he has a chance to defeat this guy. It seems stupid to let such a guy attack you. Suddenly, Kazuma Kobayakawa turned his head and looked behind him, swung his chunin sword, and struck down two shurikens again. One shuriken passed in front of his eyes, and there were traces of corrosion on the shuriken. Kobayakawa Kazuma instantly guessed the truth of the matter. The shurikens that attacked him had been quenched. As long as these shurikens scratched the skin, the toxin would seep into the body. These people dare to come, relying not on superior strength, but on quantity and poison. Making a seal with one hand, Kobayakawa Kazuma opened his mouth and spit out a puff of mist, which was the mist shinobi technique. As Mist Shinobi technique quickly covered a few hundred meters in radius, Kazuma Kobayakawa rolled his eyes. In an instant, balls of chakra fire emerged from the thick fog. Five people, 
there are five people, even though the amount of chakra of these five people is average, together they are a force that cannot be underestimated. In the eyes of ordinary Jonan, they are quite difficult to deal with. What's more, these five people are all poisoners. If it weren't for his Bayakugan, Kobayakawa Kazuma wouldn't even be able to fully observe everyone hiding in the dark. If he didn't pay attention at a certain moment in a battle, he would probably capsize in the gutter. Shadow Clone Technique Kobayakawa Kazuma separated five shadow clones in the thick fog, and his body quietly stepped aside to observe the changes in the situation. In the thick fog, everyone's vision was damaged, and only Kazuma Kobayakawa, who had the Bayakugan, could move easily. Shadow Clone quickly harvested the battlefield. In just a few minutes, three of the five ninjas in the thick fog had died and one was seriously injured. And Kobayakawa Kazuma Shadow Clone also lost two people. Obviously, there are still more powerful guys among these five ninjas. Who sent you here? Seeing that four of the five people at the scene had died, and only one seriously injured ninja was left, Kobayakawa Kazuma walked out of the darkness. You guy, where did those white eyes come from? The seriously injured ninja saw Kobayakawa Kazuma's pure white pupils, and his brain shut down. Obviously when they accepted the mission, the intelligence did not give information that Kazuma Kobayakawa had a Bayakugan, and they followed the information. But who would have thought that such an impossible thing would happen? Bayakugan is combined with Mist Shinobi technique. It can be said that Kazuma Kobayakawa has not fully developed the effect of Mist Shinobi technique until now. With the blessing of Bayakugan, he can also do it, similar to Momochi Zabaza's silent assassination technique. This is not a question you should ask. Kobayakawa Kazuma walked over. Since the other party was not going to say anything, he could only use the truth technique to search the other party's brain. Although the items found by Tujin technique have great flaws, they are still better than nothing. However, when Kobayakawa Kazuma approached the opponent, he saw that the ninja used his last strength to grab his leg, and then detonated the detonating charm attached to his body. The explosion and smoke disappeared, and Kobayakawa Kazuma's figure walked out of the darkness. Fortunately, he didn't take action just now, and just sent a shadow clone. Otherwise, he would be in trouble. Kobayakawa Kazuma didn't find anything of value during his daily picking of items on corpses, so today he seemed a bit at a loss. However, what happened today also reminded Kazuma Kobayakawa. Obviously, there is also a guy who is loyal to Konoha among the Uchiha clan, otherwise, his whereabouts would never be exposed so easily. After all, he usually avoids Anbu. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.